welcome to the Free Ride World Tour stop number one of the FWT finals here in Fieberbrunn, Austria. Located in the Tyrol region of central Austria, Fieberbrunn is part of the enormous ski circus Salbach Hinterglem Leogang complex. This is the 14th year FWT has been in the resort and Fieberbrunn has provided some of the most memorable moments in world tour history. And we are stoked to be here. Freeride World Tour finals kicking off right now in Fieberbrunn. My name is Derek Foos. I'm here with Anna Smoothie. Anna, what a day we've got. I'm so excited. We've got bluebird conditions and fresh snow on the face. The vibe with the riders is really high. I think they're so excited to throw down on the face today. Yeah, it's just been an incredible change from top to bottom. We had a big snowstorm over the last couple of days and it has coated the face in fresh powder. It's, uh, it's not too deep, it's not too shallow, it's just right, as the three little bears would say. Absolutely, we've got some speed pal out there on the face and uh, we could hear some cheering from the riders as they saw the forerunners drop in today. And as you can see, uh, blue skies. Yeah, blue skies, incredible situation. The day basically couldn't be better right now and we are so fired up. So, let's take a look at what got us to where we are now. Three events on the Freeride World Tour saw riders throwing down in some of the most beautiful mountain ranges on the planet. Then comes the cut. The field is reduced by half, with only the top ranked riders moving on to the Freeride World Tour Finals. Glory and heartbreak are at stake here in Fieberbrunn, Austria on the always intimidating Vilziloder face. So smart strategy and tactics will be critical on this notorious free ride face as ranking points are worth 25% more in these finals events. So riders are going to be hungrier than ever to put on a show for us. Can't wait to see it. And uh, the drama in Kicking Horse, how was that? I um, sat that one out officially because of a broken ankle, but really I was a little bit stressed to see the heartbreak there in, in uh, Kicking Horse as they made the cut. It was intense, and the intensity just keeps ratcheting up. Now, some of you may have noticed uh, I've got this magnificent uh, vintage piece from Peak Performance going on. It's a Polaro down, ja uh, down jacket from 1994. It's part of Peak Performance's new initiative. It's called the Wear Again, and essentially the idea is to get old stuff out of the closet and on to people. So sustainability is kind of job number one. You can, in Sweden and in Austria, starting at the end of March, you can bring your old peak performance stuff in. They'll give you a store credit towards new gear, or you can go in and buy stuff that's been returned. This one from 1994, we've got Max Palm riding in a jacket 10 years older than him a little bit later on. It's a really cool initiative from peak performance, and I think it's quite exciting that they're kind of understanding the sustainability is more than just using sustainable products in the manufacturing and stuff. It actually uses this stuff again this thing's 30 years old and i'm warm as toast yeah you don't have to sell me on circular <laughs> business models i think it's fantastic that they're leading that initiative and i'm really struggling to fit into the booth yeah. here next to you with that enormous puffer yeah this jacket has instantly become more popular than i am so we're going to check in with our judging team these are the people that make the tough decisions uh about what the riders are doing on the face you can see them there gearing up of course we've got rachel croft freeride world tour standout in her own right and now on the panel laurent gautier canadian rider verbier um podiumist and uh, and uh, just extremely experienced in the free ride world. Berti Denevo is a legend in his own right. He's been he's been part of the snowboard world since its inception. And the commissioner and head judge Lolo Bess, he's going to be overseeing the whole thing. And then we've got our guest video judge, Austrian Kiwi Siobhan Chalice, uh, an extremely experienced panel. These people basically are the cream of the crop for judging. They know what they're looking at, and maybe more importantly, they know what they're looking for. Yeah, I think they're excited to see what the riders are going to put together for them. And they're also a really integral part of uh, developing the sport. You know, riders speak to them about their lines and how different things would score. And they're always ready to give feedback before and after competition runs. So that's a great support for the riders. Yeah, huge and valuable resource for everyone in the free ride world. And we've got a great crew uh, of judges across the board, both in the juniors on the qualifiers in Region 1 and Region 2. A big thank you to all the judges out there that are doing your part to make this sport great. So let's check out the Wiltsy Lotus face. We have got two starts. The first start is up at 2,119 meters with the second start 
30 meters below that. It's a steep and intimidating face with an average 36 degree gradient, which is pushing 45 to 50 degrees in some spots. Let's hope that our riders have got some serious gas in the tank today because it's a 580 meter vertical drop down to the finish. Uh, the lookers left of the venue is north facing while over on the lookers right is more east so we can imagine that that will catch the sun and that snow will change a little bit earlier on. The wind has also been coming over from the west so the, the north face is a little bit more loaded Derek. Yeah, and you can see from this rider's eye view that we, we picked up from the drone before this storm, this isn't today, this is actually before we had the snowfall, that uh, far lookers right, riders left side, definitely more affected by the sun. We've had a few roller balls coming down, which are now frozen and or frozen in place, so riders going to need to be on their toes to avoid those. And then over on the rider's right, the snow has been a little bit more deposited. It still had the wind across it. You can see kind of how it's sculpted a little bit, but the forerunners really showed this morning that the snow is soft, very rippable. There are spots about 10 centimeters deep and other spots up to 30 centimeters deep. So the, the vibe amongst the riders when they watched the forerunners drop just went through the roof. Everybody got so excited and a complete contrast from Monday when the light was low, everyone was a little bit nervous, maybe the, the fear was a bit more, but the conditions that we have today are absolutely perfect for free ride and we are about to kick things off. Well, our first category of the day is snowboard men. Sometimes it's a win to be the first category of the day, sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but today the snowboard men, both at breakfast and especially when we got up here, were feeling like it was a huge win to be dropping first. This face looking absolutely immaculate and spectacular. So the snowboard men are fired up, they're up at the top and they're ready to go. Let's have a little bit of a look at where we sit in the overall situation right now. So. Here we go, our leader, the man in the golden bib, French rider Ludo Guillaudiat sitting on 18,000 points. He has had a solid string of results. And then right behind him, the young Mexican rookie, Liam Rivera, making a pretty intense and, uh, and splashy entry into the Freeride World Tour, moving his way up and then taking the win in his first uh, Canadian event. John Powell, Michael Mon, Holden Samuels rounding it out. And those scores are all extremely tight. And of course, we have 25% more points on offer here at Free Ride World Tour Finals. So I'd say this category, not wide open at the very top, but everything below first is just, uh, it's anybody's to grab right now. It's definitely all to play for. And uh, we're also going to check out the start list and see in which order we're dropping. We've got Ludo Gio Diat in the first spot in the golden bib, dropping in first. And then John Powell in second position, Holden Samuels, Michael Morn, Liam Rivera. And then rounding things off is our event wildcard, Ryan Wackendorfer out of the USA. So he is a really skilled half pipe rider who does a bunch of free ride and sledding in his, in his uh, spare time. He's been in Kings and Queens of Corbett's and uh, he's super excited to kind of change codes and mix it up with the Free Ride World Tour today. And I am equally excited to watch him ride. Ryan Walkendorfer has, he's basically board control master. 
Uh, so really, really psyched to see what he's going to do on this face, especially now that the snow's a little bit softer, but guaranteed he can handle conditions when it gets hard. So Peak Performance Fun Bet, this is uh, your opportunity to get involved in the game at home. It's fantasy free ride and see who you think is going to be most successful on the Freeride World Tour event by event. There's a great set of prizes up for grabs, including 3,000 euros worth of peak performance stuff for the overall winner at the end of the season. So very exciting there. Peak performance fun bet. If you haven't got your bets locked in, you may have, no, you're done. <laughs> Once our show starts, you are done. So hopefully you're locked in on that and ready to fire up and get behind the riders that you voted for. Yeah. It is interesting to see that the Golden Bib is indeed leading the fun bet so far with Snowboard Men. No surprises right. there. Yeah, exactly. 80% of you feel like Ludo Guiodia is going to be on the podium today. 63% voting for the Mexican rookie Liam Rivera and Michael Mon coming in at 60%. So this is, uh, this is who you think is going to do well today. I'm sure each rider also feels they're going to do well, and the families of these three guys are probably pretty happy to see them on the uh, top of the Peak Performance Fun Bet ladder. And wouldn't you be? And Ludo, I think, has the most experience from this field on this face. I hear it's his 10th year competing in FIBA win, So Yeah, he was really excited to let us know that. He's like, this is 10 years for me. 2013, the first time he dropped in in a challenger event or a qualifier event here. And uh, Ludo has been a mainstay on the Freeride World Tour and the qualifiers in that time, and now finds himself clicking into the groove and uh, and sitting in that golden bib, which is so exciting, and you can tell he's wearing it proudly. So here is a bit more about Ludo. Riding out of France, he's had seven seasons on tour, and he actually came third here, so he's, he's had a taste of the podium in 2022, and I'm sure he wants to continue that in the event today. Yeah, such a classic Ludo Giodia run here last year. Absolutely fall line, charging, full throttle, top to bottom. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was his first FWT podium, and he has not stopped racking up podiums since then. Ludo on a tear right now, sitting in that golden bib with a solid lead into the overall as we come into the Freeride World Tour Finals. But of course, as we said, we got more points up for offer in these events, so there's still plenty to play for. And uh, as we kind of move through the category, we're going to start to get a little bit of the shape of what rankings are going to look like after this event but the the conditions are perfect and I just I can't overstate how excited the riders are to drop in there was a slightly different feeling on Monday when it was a little dark a little bit ominous the snow I mean we we had 30 to 40 centimeters more snow now than we did then and uh, the conditions were variable I'd say uh, would be a, a generous term for it and now we have powder top to bottom we have blue sky the temperature is still nice and cool so it's not cooking uh, and we're not seeing any melting. Also a huge factor why we're starting so early in the morning. For sure, we need to get it done while the snow is good. And uh, it's definitely been nice for a change to, I mean, the, the weather is difficult, but it's nice that the riders have had time to kind of scope longer, uh, spend more time on the snow, getting a feel for Fibobun and really locking in their lines. Yeah, we had a snowfall night before last that, that really kind of changed things on the face, but it also changed things massively in the resort. And the group shred that went down in resort at Fieberbrunn yesterday was all time. And it's kind of what we've been missing with all the events starting on the first possible day all year long. Those group shreds, everybody getting out and riding together, hitting jumps, egging each other on and kind of just pushing each other up and up and up and up. It was really exciting to see and the riders were just buzzing after. Yep, love a bit of hang time on the Free Ride World Tour. And we can see up there in start two, Ludo is getting himself mentally prepared to drop in. He looks lonely up there. He's all by himself in the start gate, <laughs> ready to go. But you know his heart is beating. Ludo Guillaudiat, this is his 10th year in Fieberbrunn, and he is the man kicking things off for the first stop of Free Ride World Tour Finals here in Fieberbrunn, Austria. We are ready. I hope you're ready. Buckle up your butts because it is on. So he is dropping in from start two, working his way down, airing off that cornice. A regular rider just throwing up some snow there. Ludo already with two airs, and you can see the slough just pouring down. Snow stability deemed solid as Ludo right off the point of the pyramid onto this hanging shelf and off. Great start to Ludo Guillaudiat's run. 
and he is handling that little transition onto the other face. We mentioned that this area has a little bit less snow on it, so uh, he's he's riding strong through there, but I think it's not as forgiving as the rest of the face. Yeah, very sun affected previous to this storm, so you can kind of see where he rides in the forerunner's track. It's a little firm and getting himself now to the edge, straight off and stomping. Bolt for Ludo Giodiat and now making his way down. The riders need to be careful. Those balls that you can see under the snow came from earlier when it was really warm and they need to thread the needle through there as not to get taken out by a, a snow snake. And he's now jetted right across to the lookers left of the venue. So I think he must have something lined up for us to justify that traverse over there. Yeah, I'd say so. Fluidity, one of the categories that the judges are looking at, but they're not going to dock fluidity if you're traversing to get to something, which clearly Ludo is as he pops off that one and into another pal landing now coming cross hill into this one as he takes off. Lands it really solid, throwing up some snow there, and he is not done. Moving into this lower section here, what's he going to find for us? Well, this is just classic Ludo. The the run packed with features and never looking like he's put a hair out of place as he goes to fall line and stomps again, pointing it through the trees and through the old snowballs and now firing down through the lower face. Ludo coming into the sun and getting that warm sun on his back feels like a million smiles. That was a fantastic start to the event today. He'll be stoked with that one. I'm sure that's uh, also a big bonus. Oh, you hear Hear that he is so excited. <laughs> well, the riders up top are going to be as fired up as Ludo is because that just showed everyone exactly what the conditions are. Let's check out this run. So popping in a few smaller features at the top of his line before he lines himself up to air into that triangle hanging pad. Just perfect execution there. Yeah, the only way out of there was to air and then getting on the heel side across that kind of slightly crunchier snow, putting it into the fall line here and launching this long one. And Ludo, really smart there. I love the way he laid the tail of the board down first to avoid the punch front. We saw a few riders go down without a kicking horse when we had soft snow and Ludo showing his veteran uh, savvy there. Yeah, I think it's really about finding that balance point in your board because we've got a bit of snow, but on that section where he was is still a little bit firmer. This is his bottom air, finding the spot, riding out with some serious pace, threading those trees and avoiding the snowballs. Yeah, so you can see here what I was talking about before, that long traverse, as you mentioned, Anna, but it was it was absolutely valuable as he went all the way across. And at 87, 6, 7, the judge is absolutely loving that that run from Ludo Gio Dia. He packed it with features. He moved across the flat part. He went quick across and then found three more bigger features at the bottom. So a really, really big start to this snowboard men's category. Yeah, that is a solid score for our first rider. Oh yeah, and we head straight back up and you can see that start number one there as our next rider in the gate. He's an American rider living in Canada in the Sea to Sky Corridor, Jonathan Penfield, John Powell. He's another veteran on the tour. He's got a win in Verbier. He's uh, He's been kind of slowly climbing up the rankings, started the season in fifth and then had a second and a third, so just stacking up podiums again. Five years on the tour. Jonathan Penfield getting ready to back it up, snowboard man. And already, we're only two riders in Anna, and already spectacular. Absolutely. He's dropping in from start one and uh, looking like he's heading across to the rider's left, which requires some real navigation through exposure. But he's a very technical rider, and I'm confident he's going to nail it. It is so steep up here, and you don't see it quite yet on the camera, but the exposure underneath him is ginormous. So Jonathan coming across on the heel side as he gets himself set up over this extremely exposed section, airing into the approach to the Heusel Cliff and taking a cross court with a transfer. Oh, that, that was, was in, wow. Outrageous, threading from the Housel over to the pyramid little transfer there. Incredible stuff from Jonathan Penfield. Super creative line.
Well, the snowboard men were stoked this morning when they realized what riding first meant today, and they are making the most of the opportunity. John Pow now coming down into this slightly uh, previously sun-baked face. You can see the old roller balls there, but John making no mistakes as he weaves his way through and getting over to the lower section on a similar trajectory, but slightly lower to Ludo, and looks like he's heading down into this section on the rider's right side of the canyon, airing onto that pad. So John Pow packing with his run with features in a completely different section than we saw Ludo. And getting the grabs there on all of his airs, lining up another one down the bottom section here. And riding out clean. And you can see a little speed check there before he took off. That was smart riding because if you take that one long, it gets flat real quick. The tide runs out on that air. So smart riding from John Penfield. Yeah, it's a very short transition on that one riding out across the flats. The judging line is today at the at the uh, arch there, but the judges mentioned if someone is very far to the left or right and they run out of speed, they can unbuckle and walk their way through the arch, but no need for Jonathan Penfield. Wow, sick. Your transfer was sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's check out this transfer launching just nicking that corners, but riding up super strong and fast. Oh, that was so good, so creative, as you said, and then just continuing to pack the run with features. No issues there as he comes into this lower section. Airing, if he goes too far on that, he falls into the canyon, but there was not even a hint of it. And Jonathan, you can see here, as we said, speed checking a little bit to make sure he lands in the right spot on that one, as, as if you take it too far, it's not too nice. And then the air over the bushes, Ludo loving it. So a slightly more direct line there, and we've got the score coming in, 90.67, sliding into first position there with Jonathan Penfield. Wow, two riders in, and we're already into the 90s. This day is delivering. We talked about it a little bit after our false start. We said we really hope for the riders' sake that today ends up being a fantastic comp day, and we're two riders in, and I'd say that's already delivered on its promise. Incredible show from these men in the snowboard men's field as John Powell slides into the hot seat with a 90 point run. I think the judges will be sweating a little bit. Two riders in and already in the 90s. Yeah, they definitely don't want to paint themselves into a corner seconds. and these are the most talented men that are free riders on the planet. Holden Samuels, 23 years old. He started things off Let's in his free ride world tour career with a three, second place. Two, so he has got one, the chops for one, this. This is his first time woo. dropping in on a big oh, European free ride face. The ones we had uh, earlier, slightly smaller. The Vilsi loader, notorious for the big mountain feel and how steep and scary it is at the top. Yeah, it's certainly intimidating, but he's shown his uh, his skills in big mountain terrain already in the previous stops. He did catch a rock in Kicking Horse and take quite a tumble, but he looks pretty comfortable up there. Riding down from start one along the ridge to the looker's left, really kicking up some snow, it looks beautiful. Yeah, those snow clouds, you can see it's light, it's dry, the sun's on it, but it's not affecting it just yet. Holding our first goofy rider out of the gate, I wonder if that has any effect on his choice to go out here. So he's gonna be the first man off this, throwing a big backflip back on a slight over rotation. That's a tricky one, Holden Samuels just over rotating that one. It, you can't sort of underestimate how difficult it is to throw a flip off a feature you've never even hit before. Yeah, and his brother was the forerunner and hit that feature and he said, it's good for a backflip. But I think he just said it a little too hard. He's over here on the looker's left and it's looking pretty uh, spicy in here, lots of rocks. Really technical zone. This has uh, kind of been nicknamed the closeout couloir as, as you make your way down it. The only way out is to do that. And Holden Samuels just getting bounced a little bit on the landing. Unfortunately, not quite able to hold on to that one for the young American rookie. But he is, oh, and he found a wind lip there that he maybe didn't see in the shade. Holden getting buck wild in the lower section of the face. Yeah, that one definitely took him by surprise. So that's not the run he was looking for here in Fieberbrunn, but he certainly laid it all out on the line. It's a tricky transition for the riders from the bright sun to the shade. And when it happens quickly, your eyes take a second to adjust. And that may, maybe just uh, not quite inside the adjustment window for, for Holden. 
as he flew off that wind drift or, or slight terrain change and now coming down on the apron. So that, as you said, Anna, not going to be the day Holden was looking for, but conditions absolutely standing up to the test from the snowboard men's field. As we are three riders in, we've got two absolutely fantastic runs down, and Holden just with a little bit of trouble on that backflip. When you, If you look up at the face, maybe we'll see it on the replay, um, his bomb hole quite a lot further than the one that the forerunner set, and I, that could be just a product of the track being in. Yeah, maybe taking it a little bit faster as Ooh. that snow is packed down on the run-in. Oh. So carrying some speed across there. Massive backflip, and as you said, Derek, just over-rotated there, so he's landing on his butt. Yeah, unfortunate. So Aaron style up, control definitely down as we see him come into that closeout couloir and then just getting bucked a little bit on the landing, possibly just taking the board out of the fall line a little too quickly, and then just enjoying these magic conditions on the lower section of the face for Holden Samuels. So you can kind of hear him chatting with the other guys there. Score coming in for Holden, a 16-3-3. Yeah, with two crashes in that one. Not going to be Holden Samuel's day, but I have no doubt he's going to regroup, reset for the Extreme Verbier, and we're going to see him back in the mix on the Bec de Rose. Absolutely. He's secured his position for the finals and for next year's Freeride World Tour, so he's just having a good time at this point. Well, this just gives us such a lovely look at this face, and we head back up to the top for our next rider. He won the first event of the season in Bakira Barrett. Michael Mon riding out of Montana. This man is at home. Let's do this thing. On this face, he loves the steep, he loves the tech. He's got one of the strongest board control skills on the entire free ride world tour, riding goofy. As he heads out, he's got to make his way through those braces that hold up the, the start gate up on the summit. And this is yeah, steep and scary, and that's right where Michael Mon is at home. Riding in on his toe side, as you mentioned, that might be a bit of an advantage for goofy riders on this face. And just, yeah, above a lot of exposure right now, trying to work his way and keep his height. Yeah, necessary to keep that elevation is you don't want to end up under that rock band that's just below him or you kind of just get pulled into that couloir and miss all the features. There's Michael popping over the top of that one and slashing in the sunshine. Michael Mon making his way over to this uh, next to the Hoysel Cliff area. And lining up this little pyramid like Ludo did. Coming out bolts there, really balanced over his board, but I think Ludo might have had a bit more air time on that one. Yeah, nice, uh, nice release into the fall line, Michael. You can see there's there's some of the old slough that's under this powder, and popping a big back three, bringing it down, nice and clean. So Michael Mon really getting that uh, air and style category into play here, and popping over the bushes, making this look like an absolute joy to ride. Michael Mon now leaving the smoke clouds as he comes over the last bit of flats before the final section here of the Vilti Loader. Another puffer there. Lining up this next one. Nice grab there. Oh yeah, tweaking out that method. Michael Mon loves to do it as a skier. That's my favorite snowboard trick. And popping off this lower one and keeping it fall line. He may have one more feature over the bushes. Michael Mon, another clean run in the snowboard. Man, these guys are having a blast out there. Yeah, that was another heater run. Great run for Michael Mon. So riders really finding uh, you know different ways to use the face. It's a slightly lower tide year here in in Fieberbrunn. So some things that weren't features in the past, like some of those things we saw him popping off in the open face in between the two big sections, actually coming into play this year, which is quite cool. And some of the bigger features also are a lot bigger. Your run was so sick, dude. <laughs> Pow on a, a comp run. Sounds, in, sounds incredulous. So there he is taking on the pyramid, just looking so solid there, riding out really strong over that tricky snow. Backside three. Shout out to you, free ski team. Much love to y'all. And just bouncing his Dude, way through those beaches. That was really sick, John. 
Yeah, and I really like his approach on this section. They're just tweaking the ah, method out, holding it as long as he can. A little bounce, and then coming into this last section, ollieing over the bushes with the grab. So Michael Mon just doing everything he can, just, just adding it all together to as he knows how to do. This is a this is a multi-time hey winner on the tour. So score coming in for Michael Mon, a 77-3-3, and sliding him into third. So the judges definitely saw that little butt check that we didn't notice, but they always notice watching through the high-powered binoculars, they know what they're looking at. For sure. I think we also saw a little bit more fluidity from Ludo, Ludo's run and Jonathan's, so I think that's also part of that scoring system there. Well, have a look at this face. The conditions yeah, absolutely seven, seven, firing seven. here on the Vilti Loader, and we had back up to the top for Liam Rivera. He's a rookie on the Freeride World Tour. He was a standout as a junior. He was a standout on the qualifiers, and he has showed his place, cemented his spot with a win at Kicking Horse. He was climbing the ladder through the season seventh, then a third, then a first. Now all he has to do is keep on winning to keep himself happy and starting in this steep technical zone right out of start one. Yeah, he's a VRBA rider that's really used to big faces like the Vilti Loader, but it is his first time up on this face. I think he's had um, really enjoyed the extra time scoping and locking in his line. He's starting from start one as, and working his way down the ridge to the looker's left. Yeah, Liam said he competed here as a junior, but they didn't uh, put the juniors on this uh, competition face, which I think is a pretty wise move as he makes his way over to the money booter, pressing the roller in front. And a big backflip for Liam Rivera. Such a perfect landing. Stomped for Liam as he comes down now into this lower section. Huge powder slash. Just white rooming himself as he works his way down this cool wire, finding his next feature. Oh, just treating it like a breaking wave as he smacks the lip over and over. Liam Rivera now lining up the lower section. He's got an air here on his heel side, spinning and oh, mostly stomping there. Maybe a slight tail bend and a hand down at the landing, but a strong one for Liam Rivera. And he is not done yet as he makes his way over to the very lowest section of the Vilti Loader. Into the shade there, and he's ridden past some features that Ludo has already hit, so hopefully he's got a big one in store for us on this bottom section. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of following Ludo's track, heading down into the same landing, really clean there, and slashing right before he pounded into that tree. Clever, clever young man there. Super solid run from Liam Rivera. I think he'll be happy with that one. Yeah, Liam Rivera, he's young, he's a rookie, but he doesn't ride like a rookie. He doesn't seem to to um, let any of the, the pomp and circumstance of the Freeride World Tour get to him. The big, you know, the size of the, the event and, and all of the stakes. Fuck, that was fun. Well, that says it all, the smiles and how fun that was. This backflip from Liam absolutely stomped. Such a great way to start a run. I mean, you can only imagine how you're feeling after you nail that. And his air and style is pretty jacked. He had less features, but maybe did more with them, is what I would say. Yeah, and catching the front side three on that one, so difficult. And then this, I mean, that turn, that is just a technician move. This backflip, absolutely picture perfect. He kind of split the difference between the forerunner's track who put the track into that jump and where Holden Samuel landed. And that seems to be the sweet spot for landing on that jump. He definitely got the speed and set it perfectly. Well, anxious moments now for Liam Rivera. <laughs> waving to the fans at home, and he's got lots of them. He's got fans in Switzerland, he's got fans in Mexico, his family behind him, his dad traveling uh, here to watch in person to see Liam compete. So the judges getting to work as their score comes in, and it's an 85-3-3. Right. So Liam locking himself into the podium spot, but it is certainly not a guarantee as there is still a rider at the top. So Liam in the nervous spot. The other two men who are sitting on the podium right now, Ludo and Jonathan, guaranteed to be on the podium now as there's only one guy, Liam, in that transfer position. Michael Mon bumping down to fourth. So it's all still to play for here. And the big question mark of the day in the snowboard men's field 
Ryan Walkendorfer. He is up at the top. First time ever dropping into a free ride world tour event, but he's no stranger to high pressure events. He's got a fourth from X Games in half pipe. He's got a fourth from Dew Tour in half pipe. He's been in the half pipe world for a long time. And as you said, Anna, he's been out riding POW as well. He lives in the Vale area. Um, currently living in Frisco, and great friends with both the Molers and the Nichols boys. So a lot of free ride world tour bubbling around Ryan, but this is the first time we've seen him actually push out in a Starcade, and I am so excited to see where he goes and what he does. And taking a big bite off uh, the start one, which is definitely the hairiest start, working his way down the lookers left, down the ridge there. And as we mentioned, this this uh, vertical drop is 580 meters, which is quite a lot longer than your average half pipe run. So let's hope he's been doing all the squats uh, and getting ready to handle it. Yeah, he was he was definitely saying that he's not used to riding nearly this far. But I will say what he's used to riding on is a lot firmer than this. So coming into the jump, laying out the backflip, and oh, unfortunately, just going over the bars on the landing. That could be a critical difference between pipe riding. You're never landing in powder. So that's unfortunate for Ryan as that backflip was just looking picture perfect. And now getting out over this exposure. Yeah, he looked uber relaxed in the air, but then the connection to the ground did not go as planned. So where is he taking us through this little section here? Well, a lot of rock below Ryan now as he pops off a big one and just slashes on the heel side, comes out riding switch and now back on the regular side. So really, really exciting riding there for Ryan. And the half pipe rider is making his way towards the channel, but electing to stay on the looker's left side of it. Yeah, slashing his way down with a big back three and another just unfortunate bomb touch there for Ryan Walkendorfer. He's going to get, get down to this last hit and popping off that one nice and clean, shutting things down. So starting to see one of the prime differences, I think, between half pipe riding. You don't have that snow kind of billowing over your board. And I know Ryan spends a lot of time riding off piece, riding in the backcountry. Uh, but it's slightly different conditions here for him. So that was a bit of a, uh, a bit of an intense introduction to the free ride world tour for this half pipe standout. It's certainly an intimidating face to debut on. And it looks like he was also trying to work some snow out of his goggles in that bottom section. So might have lost a bit of visibility there. <laughs> yeah, Ryan just getting bucked there, coming out of that backflip. His goggles are off, so we've got another goggles off run from a rider on the tour this year. That one just looked like he got his board sideways a little too quickly after the landing. Sometimes it can be hard to, you want to shut your speed down there. The back three, really nice. And again, the board coming from fall line to sideways. And it's really hard to hold on to that. Sometimes you've just got to point it straight. So anxiously awaiting a score. Score coming in for Ryan Walkendorfer. That's going to be fifth place with a 29-3-3. So high fives as Ryan just kind of looking back up at the face, trying to figure out where it all went wrong. And as we look here at the glorious Vilci Loader face, we see our final standings. So we've got Jonathan Penfield in first position there with a screaming 90.67, Ludogio Dia in 87 there, and Liam rounding out that podium with 85 points. So another podium for all of these guys as they are so fired up. You can see big smiles for all the boys. Jonathan Penfield locking in the win, Ludo Giodiat and Liam Rivera. That is your podium. All three of these guys have been on the podium multiple times this year, and it continues after the snowboard men's category here in Fieberbrunn. So let's see what the mathematician wizards have done here. Ludo Giodiat holding on to the top spot and the golden bib going into Verbier, but by a much slimmer margin as Jonathan Penfield is creeping up behind him, and Liam Rivera 
Sierra now in the top three, 24,400. So exciting, exciting finish there for snowboard men. Michael Mon and Holden Samuels rounding out the top five. What a show and what a way to start things off here in Fever Brew. All right, John Pow, you guys were the first category. You said it today, that felt like a win, and what a way to start. Tell us about the, the scoping that went into that transfer air. I haven't even, I've never seen anyone do that. It was so precise. Uh, thanks, Derek. Yeah, I actually hit that in 2019, but there was a lot more snow, and you could actually see the landing from the in run. Uh, but this year, I was kind of watching that slowly fill in over the last week, and finally looked good to go today. And yeah, I was stoked that I did it. It was a little tricky coming into it because I couldn't see the landing and I came up a little short, but uh, made it across well enough to uh, stick it and ride it down through. So yeah, stoked to put that run down and uh, yeah, have some fun in the air. Yeah, fantastic conditions and a fantastic run and locking down the win. Huge congratulations to Jonathan Penfield for taking the win here at the Fieber Brune Pro. Just incredible, this transfer, as you said, he did hit it before, catching that uh, that little wind feature at the top and laid his board down perfect, and then the rest of his run absolutely fireworks. John Pow with the win. Let's do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've been waiting for this barbecue since last year. And there is no rest for the Shredders as we go straight back up to the top in our next category on the face here in Fieberbrunn, Austria at the Fieberbrunn Pro is going to be snowboard women. We'll see where they're sitting in the overall situation right now. Katie Anderson with a lock, 20,000. So three events done, two of them count. Both of those are wins for Katie, so she's got a commanding lead right now over Anna Orlova and Estelle Rizzolio. But as we said, we're on a big face, we're in powder, and anything can happen here on the Vilti Loader, and already we've seen how exciting things can get. Absolutely, and I think Katie is the only one who can actually take home the overall title today, so that's a, a big challenge for her. So let's check out the start list and see how we're dropping these gals in. So starting things off, we've got our Austrian wildcard, Manuela Mandel, previous world champion, followed by Anna Orlova, Katie Anderson in the golden bib, and Estelle Rosolio. So the girls, I think, they're fired up. They're really excited about the conditions, and I think they're ready to really put some special lines together for us today. Yeah, another category that was really excited about dropping early in the field with the conditions the way they are. They're ready to go. The, the, the face is in prime condition. They are ready and they are so excited to have these conditions for just a red hot comp. As we take a look, 91% of you feeling that Katie Anderson is going to stand on the podium. Anna Orlova taking 75% of the peak performance fun bet vote and Estelle Rizzo with 72%, so those are your three favorites. And I'm, I don't like to disagree with the fans, but I think with Manuela Mandel in the field, there may be a missing person there that has uh, has missed a few votes. Manuela Mandel, first of all, she's from Austria, so she knows this. This is her backyard. This is her playground. 
She's a free ride world tour champion. She's back from injury. She said she's feeling 100% and she didn't want to come back until she felt 100%. That was kind of her comeback process. We expected to see her dropping in in the start gate for the whole season. She said her ankle just wasn't ready and she wasn't willing to put it on the line until it was 100%. And now she says she is, it is, and we are ready for Manuela Mandel, the Austrian snowboard hero, to start off the snowboard women's category here at the Fever Brune Pro. Yeah, I saw her this morning and she was fired up for her run today, getting ready and in the mental space to send it. So she's dropping in from start two, regular rider, working her way down above the Housel Cliff and into, oh, she going into that couloir or into the triangle. So popping into the chute there, now riding out over the slough cone on the heel side, handling it like the boss she is, and now out into the powder. As we said, this has seen a little bit more sun than some of the other sections of the face, but this new snow providing a nice coat of coverage over top of that firm snow that we had before when it was sun-baked and then froze. Manuela finding some nice wind features there, just slashing her way around, popping off that wind drift as she now comes into the center part of the face, the transition piece. So let's see where she takes the run towards the channel or over to the looker's left. Looks like she's heading down to the looker's right of that channel, actually. And I heard the snow is really nice over there. Yeah, the forerunners came down with with uh, with face shots glued to their glued to their grills and big grins on their faces. So Manuela now crossing over a little bit of a bush jump as she continues down this apron in prime conditions, lining up over this nugget, popping off the center of that, and finding the seam between the old roller balls as it is pristine powder. She's got a little bit of a creek crossing coming up, but handling that slight compression with ease as a free ride world tour champion does and now just enjoying riding out of here in this pristine powder conditions popping another little lip so a lot of the uh, a lot of the little dips and divots have be by having a bit less snow through them they're providing fun features for the riders and she's certainly having fun she was throwing her hands up as she was coming out onto the flats there pretty stoked to be back on the free ride world tour i think yeah, Manuela was saying earlier that she's just really happy to be back with the crew, back to the family, and also back to feeling good. You know, she's it's been a bit of a process for her to get through this injury, and now let's see what she's got to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, this was schön. So she said that was beautiful. So her top ear, she kind of danced between the housel and that pyramid feature there and found her way through and then linked another handful of uh, smaller features so Erin style is not that jacked I guess she could have gone bigger or put a few more pieces in there but I think she was just having a great time yeah and as you said Anna just stacked up with features all the way down so the judges you know they're gonna they're gonna have a look at that you can see on the bars Erin style no spins no flips no grabs but that's you know that's kind of Manuela's style she is more the hard charging rider 69-3-3 to kick things off for the snowboard women as she came in with a huge smile on her face. And that's starting to become the trademark of the Fieberbrunn Pro so far. The riders having an absolute blast out there on the face with the conditions that we've got. Yeah, we've had some challenging conditions throughout the season and I think they're just so stoked to be skiing pal when they can have perfect visibility and just let her loose. Yeah, and really proving the concept of the weather window here in uh, in the Fieberbrunn area as we've had some tough weather. You know, we've had snowfall, we've had cloudy days, we've had foggy days, we've even had a little bit of rain uh, below, the, below the bottom of the venue, but we are in form right now as we go back. Anna Orlova back on tour. She got uh, didn't quite make it through the cut last season and then back on the qualifiers, earned her way back and then a solid string of results, a second, a fourth, a third for Anna. Put her into the qualifying spot for finals and into the following season, the 2024 season guaranteed for Anna Orlova as she drops in here. And definitely looking like a seasoned rider. She handled herself so well in kicking horse when she released a pocket and just, yeah, kept herself safe and kept sending it. So she's into the same zone where Manu was and is going more into, airing into that pyramid feature there where you need to air out and looking fast and fluid as she rips out across that tricky avalanche debris. 
Yeah, Anna handled that really well. And then the big heel side turn just to shut the speed down as she comes into this peppery middle section, popping through, making sure she's careful at that transition where the two sides of the face meet. That can be an aggressive, aggressive compression there if you hit it at the wrong angle. But no threat of that for Anna as she's just bunny rabbiting her way all the way down the face over all these little features that are, uh, that are kind of shaped up in the middle section, this transition part between the steep, steep upper part and the lower canyon section of the Vilti Loader. Yep, popping her way through throwing up a bunch of snow. Looks like super nice riding there. Going for the grab. Might have just touched it. And is working her way down the lookers right of that channel. Can she find some little features for here? for us here as well. Yeah, she's got Manu's track as a bit of a landmark there, so to, to line herself up over this low feature coming in on her toe side, Anna Orlova taking a cross court, and that landing just so receptive. A beautiful, uh, a beautiful reception into the landing for Anna Orlova, and look at that, the body language tells the whole story. She is so psyched. So pumped to be riding Pal with her friends in the free ride family. And working away across the flats there. As we mentioned, the judging line is the gate, but it's really hard to carry your speed across there. So judges will not be docking them for that. Well, this really feeling like a reward for the free riders on the free ride world tour. <laughs> as the whole waiting time has been tough weather, it's been cloudy, it's been snowing, and now the sun comes out on the final day and you can see the riders are so, so grateful that we waited through the weather window to get this, to get these conditions. So this is the top of her section there. And then those little poppers down the bottom, just having a good time. Working yeah, we can hear in. Anna in the background in the finish area, just letting that stoke go as, yeah, just kind of bunnying her way all the way down, popping over every little thing, ollieing over the bushes. This looks like a good time for these riders and Manu loving it as well as she sits in the Dina Star hot seat. You can see Anna's line taking a pretty fall line all the way down that rider's left section. And it's great. This new snowfall has brought that whole section back into play. Love to see it. So anxious moments as the score comes in at 67 67, yeah. sliding Hunter into second place behind Manu Mandel. All right. So Anna holding on to second there as high fives as she exits. And we go into our next rider. This is the lady wearing the golden bib. And she has had quite a season on the free ride world tour. Katie Anderson, the pride of Jaffrey, BC, riding at a Fernie Alpine resort, but revi residing, of course, in Jaffrey. She's had a couple seasons on the tour, and she is sitting in first with a pair of wins to her name already this year, and another rider who is extremely excited looking at things this morning, the way it's shaped up. Katie Anderson loves riding powder. Uh, you know, conditions in Fernie have been, have been pretty great this year. She went home in the break and got to ride pow a whole bunch at Fernie Alpine. Resort and now up here on the Vilti Loader looking to make a big splash and put a stamp on her campaign to lock up the Freeride World Tour Championship, the title. If Katie wins today, the title is hers, but that's a big ask in this field of snowboard women. And that also brings a lot of pressure. She had a tumble in her last event, so let's hope she's got her head game on point and she's ready to bring the heat today. Yeah, talking to her at breakfast, uh, or sorry, at breakfast yesterday, she, she was saying she's trying not to think about that. It's all about the process of putting a run together and executing that run, and then the big picture stuff will take care of itself down the line. You have to execute on the day, and this is where that journey begins for Katie Anderson as she gets set to represent the population of Jaffrey, BC. Katie Anderson on the Vilti Loader now in that golden bib. Just dropping out of uh, start one there. And uh, having a bit of a tricky moment straight out of the start gate. Hopefully that hasn't rattled her and she can get her head in the game. Yeah, it looks like she just dug her heel side edge into the guy wire that holds the tent up. And uh, not a very edgeable surface. No, certainly not. But she's working her way down the ridge on the lookers left, leaving clouds of cold smoke behind her. 
Yeah, much more edgeable surface now. This ridge line, just probably some of the best snow on the whole face as it's just so light and dry now and a pleasure to ride as Katie's slashing her way down this upper section, getting up and over the roll here into a pristine pow field. Katie Anderson getting things going. Finding her first bigger feature there and moving pretty fluidly through the face. Yeah, it's become the hallmark of Katie Anderson's riding. She goes fast. Coming from that World Cup border cross um, career, she's not afraid of speed. She's not afraid to, to, uh, to open up the throttle. And we're seeing it here as Katie Anderson in this totally untapped section of the face. Absolutely pristine powder and coming into a closeout section as she points it into the fall line. And stomps it, riding out really strong. Catching another little feature there, navigating through those ice balls. Yeah, Katie Anderson just needing to make her way through the rubble here. Those are anxious moments for, for everyone watching as she can see where she's going, but we're just hoping she goes in the right direction. And now coming into an uh, area that we saw get a lot of play from the snowboard men's field. You know, we got a couple tracks in here for Katie to follow, so landmarking pretty easy as she catches that heel side edge and a little bit of a pause there is a maybe too much pressure on the heel side but still clean not going down there for Katie Anderson be a bit of a fluidity dock but otherwise a really strong run for our current world tour leader yeah a solid line and uh, some some good air time and just amazing board handling skills yeah, and Katie putting herself into that technical zone, which I think is really going to play well with the judges. Certainly did with me as a spectator from our comfortable seats here at the bottom of the face. But they like to see that, you know, uh, the, the exposure adds to the line score. You put yourself in a difficult situation on the face and then handle it like that. She said that she was white rooming herself all the way down. Tricky one. Here's that top feature. Solid landing, great hillside turn directly after. You did that really well, lady. Thank you. You, you can see good. on the judges' bars okay. there, so fluidity way up as she was moving fast. And then this section, probably the highlight of her run. There's no other way out of there, so you really got to back yourself going into that section that you're going to be able to handle both the takeoff and the landing. And she had the constitution to thread another little feature directly afterwards, so well handled. I'd say that's the only blemish on this run is that small pause after that bottom air. Yeah, just digging the heel side edge in and it looked like she got bumped off an old track and then the heel side edge dug. But what she didn't do was dump the toe side edge over the front and, and get tossed over the bars. And that's just a testament to how strong Katie's skill is and her technique. I mean, all of those things come into play. The five categories that the judges are looking at, Katie Anderson ticking all the boxes. All right, score so coming in for Katie Anderson, 70.67, and she moves yes. into first place. So Katie Anderson has done what she needed to do. Now the rest of the field in control of her destiny as, uh, as whether or not she becomes Freeride World Champion today. A huge hug from Manu Mandel, these two. They're okay. good friends and love riding and competing together. But, yeah. So sliding into the hot seat there. She'll be thrilled with that one. We've just got one more rider to go. Ooh, well, Katie Anderson has done her part, and there's only one more woman who can have a say in this. If Katie Anderson wins the... Viltilo, or sorry, the Fieberbrunn Pro, she does become freeride world champion today. But Estelle Rosolio, the only one who can change that, and you know she's hungry. Estelle has just been on the ascendancy. She's got a fourth, then a third, then a second. There's a one spot that she hasn't been yet this year, and that is the top step of the podium, and she would like nothing more than to derail Katie's championship plans today and take that step away from her. Estelle Rosolio, she's a rookie on the tour this year, brand new to the Freeride World Tour, but nowhere near new to Freeride. She's been out there banging around in the mountains, slashing, hitting big airs, doing big tricks for her whole Freeride career, and now, lucky enough for us, we get to see it on the big stage. Estelle Rosolio, French rider, on course. Dropping in from start two, and as you mentioned, she's made such a splash on tour so far. She's got freestyle, she's got big mountain skills, 
So I'm really excited to watch her ride today. Working your way above the Housel Cliff there. Yeah, you can see that area has been chopped up a little bit from some of the snowboarders, but taking it right through the fall line and unfortunately getting spun around and going down. That was kind of an awkward angle that Estelle took that at and really difficult to hold onto it on the toe side edge in that kinked corner where the two aspects kind of meet. Yeah, a tricky one. So she's going to have to jack going for a wee 360 there, but just not quite enough speed and not quite getting it run. But I love to see that she is bringing these elements into her run. Yeah, Estelle Rosolio bringing the 360 there. And now on the lower section of the face, you can see it's a little bit chopped up from the old uh, roller balls when we had the warm weather earlier on in the week. But now the surface absolutely grippable and rippable for these riders. Estelle coming all the way out into the far rider's left side. We haven't seen anybody out here other than our, uh, than our guides doing the ski cuts this morning. So this snow pristine for Estelle. Yeah, opening up a new line and just laying down some big slash turns and taking that one so long. Oh, Estelle with the massive send there as the ground just rolled away from her and now navigating those old frozen roller balls. Estelle Rosolio going huge there. She's really sending it today. I think she'll be pumped with this run irrespective of a few butt checks. It's always nice to go full send. We can hear the snowboard woman screaming for her in the Finnish corral there. Oh yeah, Estelle, I mean, it didn't exactly go to plan. Now she's got a couple of creek crossings to make as she hops and pops over. And she's, you can see she's a little bit low. I think she may have to do, uh, she may have to do a little bit of a board off stroll to get back to the finish area as she comes grinding to a halt. And we said earlier, you said earlier, Anna, that's no penalty for the riders if, if you end up on the flats there and you have to walk back over to the finish area. So this is her spicy top section there, and I think she caught a rock. Maybe needed a little bit more speed to clear that cleanly, uh, and it spun her right around, but she kept it together and continued on with a pretty savage run. Yeah, and it can be intimidating to let go into the fall line from as high as you need to when it's so steep and so exposed. And then this one just continuing to fly there. Estelle going huge off that low feature. And that one really rolls away. I wonder if that was the intention. It does. I think that was the biggest air we've seen from the snowboard women's category today. So solid line. Didn't go perfectly to plan. But uh, I think she's got a big smile on her face, on her face, irrespective. As the score comes in for Estelle Rosolio into fourth with a 28-3-3, and you can hear the whole Finnish corral cheering for Estelle. That respect the send, as they say, and the other riders certainly do, as everyone got pumped for that, and <laughs> she's gonna get a full field snowboard woman's dog pile. Estelle Rosolio raising the bar there, going absolutely huge. So let's check out the rankings. The event scoreboard is as follows. Katie Anderson at the top spot there, and we all know what that means. Manu Mandel coming back with a wild card in second position, and Anna Orlova in third there. Yeah, Estelle Rosolio with the super send run, locking it down in fourth. Unfortunate uh, that she wasn't able to pull that together, but absolutely love the show she put on. And you could see the other riders did too as they just mobbed her in the, in the finish area. As we go down back to the finish area for our flower ceremony, this is your podium. Katie Anderson taking the dub, Manuela Mandel in second, Anna Orlova in third, and this is a fired up group of snowboarders as we go into what this has done to the overall rankings. We're gonna take a look here, and I have a feeling it's gonna give us a, uh, a clearer picture of the overall. So Katie Anderson with the win, sitting in first by a country mile. Anna Orlova now in second at 22,400, and Estelle Rosolio now in third position. So Katie Anderson, 32,500 points. That is an unassailable lead, and we have a new free ride world champion in Katie Anderson. 
Katie, you've just become Freeride World Tour champion. How was it to put a run together under such pressure? Um, I'm just happy to have made it down, really. I, <laughs> yeah, had a, lots of fun. The snow was great. Didn't quite do what I wanted to do, but yeah, had a great time out there. I'm happy. <laughs> good enough for the win and good enough for the World Championship. A huge congratulations to you, Katie. Well done. Thank you, and congratulations to all the other riders out here today. It was awesome. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Congratulations to everybody who gets to ride this face. Congratulations to the pride of Jaffrey, our new freeride world champion, Katie Anderson, getting it done with the pressure on her shoulders. An incredible show out there from the snowboard women, and all smiles as we look back on Katie Anderson's run. Top to bottom, packed with features, fully in control, high speed, everything the judges love to see, and that is why Katie Anderson is the champ. We are continuing our journey through the Fieber Brune Pro 2023 here, the first stop in the FWT Finals this year. And so far, it has delivered everything we hoped for with the snowboard fields both absolutely cracking off. As we take a look where we sit coming into this in our ski women's category, the first ones to drop today, Addie Rafford sitting at the top of the heap, but only by a thread, Molly Armanino close on our heels, as is Canadian wildcard for the year, Justine Dufour-Lapointe, Elizabeth Gerritsen, and Megan Baton. It's all super close, and with 25% more points on the line in these two finals events, it's really still all to play for for the ski women. Yeah, I think uh, the girls are ready to send it, so let's check out the order in which they're dropping today. Beautiful day. So we have got Molly Armanino kicking things off, and then our wild card, Ariana Tricomi, who is no stranger to this face, also a triple world champion, and Addie Rafford wearing the golden bib is dropping in third. Miga, Megan Baton, she's coming in fourth position, and Justine Defoe Lapointe in fifth. Well, we'll have a look at what you thought as we look at the start gate. Molly Armanino ready up there to kick things off. She loves skiing powder. 77% of you feeling like the two-time Olympic medalist Justine dufour lapointe is going to take a podium spot. Elizabeth Garrison, you can never count her out. 73% of you agree with that. And Addison Rafford, a big splash on the tour so far in her rookie year, already locking down a win on the tour, plus another podium. So that's what the Peak Performance Fun Bet votes look like like we're going to see how it plays out as Molly Armanino she is going to be the first rider on skis on the face today in earnest as the ski women's category is underway here with our first rider Molly Armanino yeah she's got two second places behind her and uh, a little crash in the last event but she's ready for this one and ready to bring the scent she started from start one and is working her way down the ridge looking super playful like she's having 
Some nice pal turns there. Yeah, great way to get yourself fired up for the run. A couple little slashes, get the legs moving. The riders have been standing around. They watched the face, or they did the face check, then watched the forerunners, then went up to the top. So it's been uh, not a lot of skiing in the last hour to hour and a half for these athletes. So it's a good way to get things kind of moving and firing as, as Molly comes down to the steep and technical part of the Vilci Loader face here, getting things going. Yeah, and she has been finding the gnarliest parts of all the faces we've skied on so far this season. So I think she's going to make something really interesting here on the Wilty Loader. Finding her first air there. Airing right into the flats of that couloir and arcing a turn as she coming down to the point of this thing now, popping off the edge. So getting things going in earnest now. Molly Armanino just playing with the razor's edge in the powder as we see her going over into uh, an untracked section. The, the scoping of this and the understanding where you are on the face is so tricky. There's so many bushes, they all look quite similar, but Molly Armanino knows exactly where she's going. Heading into a little closeout zone, taking it and riding out super strong there with some real speed. Nice one from Molly. Yeah, and you could see her having to just push her feet apart to allow one of those old ice balls to go through and not catch her on the tip. Molly Armanino now coming down into this sort of more playful section. There's a few poppers and rollers that we saw the snowboard men really working. And Molly popping off there, catching the safety grab and moving down to the final feature or one of the final features. See what angle she takes this one on. Nice one there. Oh, getting a... I think she landed a little bit off balance there and just got sat down. Oh, that's tough for Molly as it was all going well, but that is the nature of free ride. It's not over till it's all the way over as Molly Armanino just laying almost in disbelief that she was so close to the checkered flag. And unfortunately it came undone at the last feature. So Molly looks like she's okay. She's getting up. Uh, I think that, that stillness may have just been the, the, the disbelief as she kind of takes in what just happened. So that's an unfortunate finish to that run for Molly as she now goes in search of her ski poles. Yeah, it really came to a pretty hard stop there. And I think she's lost not one but two poles, but hopefully they're directly above her. I can see one there, and she's working the legs, getting, getting them back in hand. So really creative take on the Vilti Loader face for Molly. Uh, a lot of these riders in the field today, this is their first time on the face. And, uh, and, and there's a lot that goes into that. You know, this, this one I think does favor the riders who have been here before, who have experienced the, the various coats of the Vilti Loader. Um, and Molly, a rookie on it, you know, the first time the riders get a view of this thing, it is big. Yeah, and just a little bit unbalanced. Her legs were going over to her left there as she landed and they just came right out from underneath her. Yeah, you can see that left arm trail behind her as she takes off. So a little bit of weird rotation, maybe not quite finish the turn before she took off. So there's a slight bit of left to, light, uh, left to right rotation. You can see the left arm going up in the air trying to fight it. But once you're in the air, there's nothing to push against to kind of fix that, uh, that impetus that you've got going in a direction. And Molly, unfortunately, not able to get herself square for the landing. And now she's got a sweaty little hike to get her other ski pole, sending a ski dude or a ski ninja down to retrieve that for Molly. But I like to see that she's not using pole straps. Our riders have done lots of avalanche training, and we know that they can be anchors if you get caught in the slide, so it's much safer to have your pole straps off when you're free riding. So you can see here as the ski dude hands Molly her pole, we've got 30 members of the security team on the face. It's an incredibly robust team. They're consisted of a, a stack of ski patrollers, the mountain rescue team local here to Austria, um, multiple ski guides, uh, two doctors, two paramedics, top to bottom on the face, the riders are covered, so easy access for, for the safety team to get to the riders in the case of an injury or the case of a misplaced ski pole. Absolutely, love to see it. I didn't quite believe that they had 18 in the mountain rescue team uh, until they all skied past me in their red jackets this morning, so love to see it. And Molly is all smiles after that little explosion. So Molly Armanino there with a 29.67. Not the day 
that the Tahoe native was looking for, but you know she's gonna come back swinging when we get to Verbier as the steeper and gnarlier and scarier it gets, the more Molly Armanino loves it. So as we move on through the ski women's field, the next rider in the gate is gonna be Ariana Tricomi. And I was in the room when her event wildcard was announced for this competition. And the looks on the other riders in the ski women's categories faces was like just fear. They were, they were like, oh, Ari's coming. Ari, the last time she competed on this face, she won. The last time she competed on the Freeride World Tour, 18, 19, and 20, she was world champion. So this is a huge, huge addition to the Freeride World Tour ski women's category as a wild card. And she was not that psyched on the conditions on Monday, but this morning she was vibrating, almost floating through the breakfast hall. And she's like, have you seen it up there? It looks so good. And she is so so pumped. So she's got three titles. The last time she skied this face, she won. She's got to be just brimming with confidence as Ariana Tricomi is on the Vilti Loader once again. Absolutely fizzing her way out of the start gate one there and working her way down the ridge. Super excited to see Ari back on tour. Always such a playful rider. You can see her popping her way down the ridge there. Such a distinct style as the hands come up. It almost looks like she's cheering her way down the mountain. She loves it. We love to watch it. And Ari going in with pace right now as she is very comfortable on the Vilti Loader, especially in these conditions. Definitely. So looks like she's trying to find a new entrance here. Really interested to see where she is going. Extremely technical zone as she doubles down in and out and absolutely flying now, looking in control, popping over those little wind features and ribs and getting her way through that section in no time. Ariana Tricomi showing why she's a winner on this face. She just handled those rocks so well, just aired and rode over them. Coming into a closeout zone here, stomping it, riding out super strong into the sunshine, throwing out some snow. Yeah, and we saw Ari Tricomi, where she landed on that is kind of the money spot, the happy honeypot in that landing. We saw earlier Ryan Walkendorfer go way past that, and that one, the tide goes out quick. It gets really flat. So Ari, this is knowledge. This is experience coming into play as she knows exactly where those transitions run out. A 360 there. Perfect landing. Straight into a turn, looking super strong. That was Ariana Tricomi's trademark when she was on the tour full time. And you can see by this run that she has not let go of that trademark. Fighting her way through a couple of the roller balls there. Ari making her way down now through the lower section. That was a really strong run. I love the combination of the true free ride big mountain at the top and then the poppy playful freestyle both at the very top and at the bottom. Really strong combo. Ariana just proving once again, not that it needed proving, why she is a multi-time Freeride World Tour champion. I love you guys. Love you Freeride World Tour. Gangsta, gangsta. Gangsta, gangsta. Gangsta, gangsta. Love the vibes in the Finnish corral there. So here she is working her way through the salt and pepper, handling it so well, coming into a beautiful turn directly afterwards, just looking so strong. And here's that closeout here, and she just points it straight. Yeah, that was the, the, the only way, the best way to do that. Popping the 360, tips just skimming the uh, the top of that tabletop feature, but had just enough to get over it and landing clean as we kind of expect Ariana Tricomi to do. All right, so an 86-7 for Ari Tricomi, and she makes her way into the hot seat. Ari Tricomi is back and with a, with a bang, with a stamp of authority on that. Love to see it. So we have got Addison Rafford coming up next and she is our current leader, absolutely screaming first season on tour.
Yeah, Addie Rafford coming out of Sun Valley. She's got that freestyle kind of heritage. She started free riding a little bit and then found it too scary, so she took a break, but then missed it so much she came back, qualified right onto the tour, and immediately showed why she qualified, why she won the Challengers tour last year with a win in her very first free ride world tour event there's something about Addie's skiing that just makes you want to go skiing every time she drops in all i want to do is is put the microphone down and get out and get on the slope she always makes it look fun and she looks like she's having fun which i think is the hallmark of the great runs on the free ride world tour absolutely she makes the most of every feature has a really distinctive style and just looks like she's having the best time on the face. She didn't even. She couldn't even wait for the for the right start time. She just dropped in. Yeah, she's <laughs> always wanting to go. You know, the the other riders in the Starcade talking about what what a fun presence she is and how she just brings everybody's mood up around when everybody's a little nervous. Pumping over this roller, Addison Rafford getting herself into the air, sending that one. Oh, and just catching a bump on the outrun. She was, I thought, away clean and free and then just getting bucked a little bit. Addie Rafford going down on that one. Hate to see it. She was looking so strong as she came into that one. But yeah, you're right. I think she hit a bobble as she landed and then just got bucked into the back seat. Yeah, and even on the takeoff, I'm sure we're going to see it, but there's a big roll that you have to kind of get light and press through to then kind of get into the full transition of the takeoff. And, you know, if you miss your timing on the press and the pop, you could see the way at center. It was really out, not as much up as we've seen some of the other riders that have hit that. We'll take a look here and see if we can dig into it. So maybe a little back seat and then just not able to get back to the front of her boots in the landing. Yeah, so that's an unfortunate one for Addie Rafford as we've seen so many great things from her on the Freeride World Tour. But the Vilsi Loader is not a forgiving place. This is a big alpine face in the heart of the Austrian Alps. And there's no, there, it really punishes mistakes quickly and aggressively. And we saw that there from Addie as uh, she's just kind of hanging out. I'm not sure if she's waiting for somebody else to, to come and grab her pole or she's just getting her, oh yeah, we've got the ski dude there coming into sight who's going to collect her pole for her and get Addie Rafford back on track. That's an unfortunate end. Both, uh, both the American riders so far are having a tough time with the Vilti loader. It's taken names here uh, so far in the ski women's field. And Ari Chirkomi, that what's happened to Addie is almost a testament to, to what Ari was able to do here. Yeah, she put together an incredible run. And this is also going to really shake up our rankings. Our number one and two spots have both had crashes and lost their poles today. So... Looks like she's just threading her way down the couloir, getting some power turns in, white rooming herself. Yeah, so Addie Rafford wrapping things up and still going to be enjoying these wonderful powder conditions as we, uh, as we move through the ski women's field. And if you haven't heard, right after the Freeride World Tour wraps up, the second stop of the Freeride World Tour Challenger Tour is going to be kicking off on the Vilsi Loader right behind it. Super Thursday here in Fieberbrunn. We have got a lot of competitive freeride, so if you're in the area, maybe you're watching on TV, you still have time to get up here and take in not only the world's best free riders on the tour, but also those vying for those coveted spots here on the free ride world tour in the challenger event. We had uh, a bit of a tough one in Jasna and Slovakia where the avalanche conditions were just off the charts and not unable to run. So big ups to the free ride world tour organizing group for regrouping and rerouting everyone from Slovakia to Austria and putting on this huge day. But Addy Rafford coming in, she's going to be, uh, Giving a big high five to Ari there. So Addy Rafford coming in with a 15. And that is not going to trouble Ari Tricomi as she sits in the hot seat. Ariana's mum is such a boss and an amazing skier and tally marker. I think uh, 
she might have taught Ari a few tricks in her time. Well, she's done a great job because she is a three-time World Tour champion and holding down the hot seat here at the Fieber Brun Pro in 2023 because we're starting to see a few more tracks form here on the Vilci Loader face as we slowly zoom in to the start gate. We're going to see our next rider coming into view. And although we've had a couple of crashes, I'd say Ari's seat not overly safe yet as we look at Megan Beton, French rider out of Chamonix. She's a ski instructor, she was a ski racer. She had a tough start to the year and then with all the pressure on at the cut, she rose to the occasion and put down the winning run in Kicking Horse with one of the purest free ride lines of the day. Full speed, full stomp, multiple airs in a row. Megan Baton showing exactly why she's on the Free Ride World Tour. And I think we're now coming into what is a little bit more her style of face. So looking forward to a great run here from the young French rider. So Megan is dropping in from start two, working her way down with quite a lot of pace there above the Housel Cliff and getting pretty butt there. Unbelievable oh recovery for <laughs> Megan Beton. A ski ballet, 360 overexposure, bringing it around at the absolute critical moment. That was incredible. That was outrageous from Megan and she is not stopping there. Stacking in another cliff feature there and riding out strong as if nothing happened. Wow, Megan Baton showing her cat like reflexes on the most exposed and scary part of the face as she got spun around in that old snowboard track. And now she's just probably trying to regroup and reset her mind as she's still not done. And there's plenty to play for with two big crashes already in the field. Megan Baton can definitely salvage a result here. And she's coming in above this tricky cliff with this really short transition, handling her speed well and riding out strong. That was the perfect, perfect way to take that air for Megan Baton as she comes over. The, you can see now as we get more and more tracks on the face, it starts to affect the riders coming through the tracks uh, more than it did before. And that was certainly the case in the upper section as she got stuck in that snowboard track and the soft snow underneath just tossing her into the scariest 360 <laughs> that you could possibly do. So let's check out the recovery of the century. So it gets caught up there, 360s over a rock, somehow pulls that together. Unbelievable. That was insane. <laughs> Megan Baton rescuing herself from doom there with just such incredible reflexes. The ability to do that in that spot. She took this cliff exactly the way it needs to be taken. Well, it looks, you know, maybe from your view, like they're slowing down too much. If you carry any further than that, you're going to get pancaked into the ground, squashed like a bug on a windshield. So that's the way it has to be done if you hit that cliff. So Megan Beton, well, it wasn't exactly to plan. It was certainly exciting. Well, the judges have to be wondering what to do with that because she didn't go down. She certainly lost control, so there's going to be a dock on control. But it wasn't a fall. It wasn't a crash. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, backwards over the rock in the heart of the exposure, getting her skis back around into the fall line. We almost need a, a, a category for recovery. So a 55 there for Megan Beton. Uh, you can see probably more relief than anything right now. She's definitely disappointed in that run overall, but she's got to be relieved that she didn't go backwards over those rocks. I'm extremely relieved that she held that together. And Ariana Tricomi is still sitting comfortably in the hot seat there. Yeah, she's looking strong. Her run as we make our way through the ski women's field gets stronger and stronger. So only two riders left in the field, which means Ari's going to be on the podium today in her glorious re-emergence uh, re onto the competitive free ride scene. No surprise there to see Ari Tricomi sitting in that hot seat. But this is a serious challenge. Uh, Montreal's Justine Dufour Lapointe. She's got a gold and a silver from the Olympics. She's already got a gold on the Free Ride World Tour this year. She's come in hot, sixth, first, fourth. And Justine Dufour Lapointe has been a huge addition onto the Free Ride World Tour, and she is loving her time here. Yes, yeah, super solid skiing from her so far this season. She's dropping in from start two with her typical aggressive skiing. Coming down onto the Housel Cliff. Getting herself lined up. 
Looking like she's trying to get eyes on her trajectory as she goes over a little bit, a tiny bit of hesitation and taking the same cross court move as we saw Estelle do, but actually getting her skis in the right direction. So a nice connection there for Justine making her way now across to this wind lift. This thing was just a wall of rocks the other day and a little bit of a grab there for Justine dufour Lapointe as she makes her way now into this lower cliffy zone. And taking that one, four point landing, riding out super solid. All right, now Justine in the transition section of the face. There's this long kind of open bowl between the steeps at the top and the steeps at the bottom. So riders just kind of getting an, uh, an opportunity to regroup as now she's into this poppy and playful section that we've seen a bunch of traffic through as it definitely looks like a good time for the riders. And a little shifty there, riding out strong. And just bouncing through the section, getting popped off that low cliff and now pointing it through the fall line. Justine using every single squat and <laughs> deadlift that she's done all season to hold on to that one. So a clean run. We haven't seen a clean one since Ari Tricomi and that was a strong one from Justine de la Pont. Yeah, interesting. Like she may have been sitting and observing what was happening in the field and micro adjusting her line, adding or removing features according to what the field is doing. So definitely lost a bit of fluidity up here above the housel and taking that entrance off to the side but riding out really strong and yeah. maybe didn't have as much speed as she wanted coming over that wind lip but then threading through to find a really solid air here. Yeah, we've seen that windlet become a bit of a freestyle playground over other seasons on the Freeride World Tour. And I wonder if just without the track in there for Justine. And then a big shifty on that one. You can see carrying over the bomb hole, such a strong landing. That looked like a World Cup mogul landing. Boom, absolutely four points, bolts. So you can see the uh, bars all lit up for Justine coming in at 68.33. So Justine de Four Lapointe into second as we see now Ariana holding on to that hot seat for another challenger. We'll get a look at the total picture now as we see the top five currently in ski women, Ari Tricomi, Justine dufour Lapointe, and Megan Baton in a podium position with that wild move above. But of course, nothing is done yet as we still have another extremely dangerous rider at the top of the face. Here on the Viltsi Loader, the Fieberbrunn Pro just delivering everything we hoped it would, Anna. Yeah, the girls are definitely having fun out there, skiing pal, finding some super creative features and just going full send, really. We've got one more rider at the top, as you mentioned, one of my favorites from this category, super creative skiing style, Elizabeth Gerritsen. Oh yeah, Elizabeth Gerritsen, always a threat on the Freeride World Tour. She's got one last piece of kit to put on. You don't want to drop in with your gloves dangling. But Elizabeth Gerritsen, she's a Freeride World Tour champion. She's a winner on the Bec de Ross. Everywhere she goes, she's a threat for a victory. She's got such a great style. It's, it's just that oozing Verbier style that always looks like oh, it's smooth. I think that's the best way I can describe it is smooth. But she skis with such power. And it's always a, a curious debate in my head when Elizabeth Garrison drops in, if we're gonna see freestyle Elizabeth or if we're gonna see the mountain goat Elizabeth, which one will it be today on the Viltsi Loader? Well, she's heading into a pretty serious part of the venue there from start one, straight into the NAS, skiing super strong and fast, but tumbling, oh my. Oh, Elizabeth going down on the entry into the Eagle, falling through the rock section, and now she's got a big pile of slough kind of coming down. She's trying to arrest herself there. Yeah, you can see just fighting to slow herself down. She's still moving with the snow. So Elizabeth is gonna just try to stop the speed. That slough that she kicked off at the top just continuing to move her down as she finally gets herself arrested. Elizabeth Gerritsen taking a scary fall there on the Viltsi Loader face. We mentioned the security team here. We've already got a ski dude or guide with her. She is moving and waving. Oh, happy to see her waving there. 
Definitely uh, not 100%, probably, you know, banged up. She definitely fell through a lot of rocks. They're really happy to see Elizabeth Gerritsen sitting up and waving as already the patrol mountain rescue is, uh, is at her, checking in on her. As that was a long tumble for Elizabeth Gerritsen. Yeah, so they'll be checking in with her, seeing what kind of support she needs there on the field. So I'm sure her friends and family are tuning in anxiously, but we hope that she is going to be all good. Well, that was an extremely aggressive approach at the top of the eagle for Elizabeth Gerritsen. She came in hot. I think she was planning on doing a double out of the exit, but the speed, a little too much to take it as a double, but not quite enough to take it as a single. And when you try to shut down a bunch of speed in such limited real estate, uh, you know, things can, can get really scary really quickly in that section of the face. And, and unfortunately, Elizabeth kind of becoming a victim to that exact thing. So really happy to see her up and moving around. Hopefully she's going to be all right as we've got the, the mountain rescue team on site. As we said before, 18 ski patrollers, the whole um, Saddleback mountain rescue team on, on site, a couple of doctors, a couple of paramedics, all within striking distance for the riders. And, and, and you could see there the mountain, rescue, um, the mountain rescue team member was to Elizabeth and already moving before she, she had stopped moving. So they're gonna be checking in on her and, uh, and seeing what she needs on the face here as uh, definitely, uh, I'm sure she's not feeling great. Yeah, that was a really tough one to see. You can see another member of the security team making their way down there to Elizabeth. Great response there, all positioned um, throughout the face so that they can react to wherever a rider takes a tumble or loses a pole or a ski. And I think it's important to, to recognize the the, the game that these riders, well, it's not a game at all, but the, the decisions that these riders are taking do truly have consequence. This is a big mountain, and while the riders are, are making their decisions, you know, looking for a result or looking to have fun or whatever, all, all of these things come into play in the decision-making process, and they recognize kind of the risk versus the reward of, of, of the glory. Um, but this mountain is a serious big face, and, and a consequential place to, to play around. So Elizabeth Gerritsen hopefully is gonna be all right from that big crash, but uh, definitely a scary one for the young Swiss rider. Well, as that was the last rider in the field, Elizabeth Gerritsen wrapping up the ski women's category. We can take a look while we wait for information on how Elizabeth is doing at how the day played out. So our wild card, Ariana Tricomi, is up there in first position with an incredibly creative freestyle line. Justine dufour Lapointe in second position, which is super solid from her, and Megan Baton with the recovery of the century in third position. Yeah, Molly Armanino, Addison Rafford, and Elizabeth Gerritsen all going down, unfortunately, in their quest for glory here on the Vilci Loader. We're still just waiting for word of the, uh, of the situation with Elizabeth. She's up and moving, um, so now Mountain Rescue just doing some assessments and, uh, and seeing the help she needs. As we, as we wrap up the ski women's category there, an incredible show and Ari Tricomi showing exactly why she's the multi-time free ride world tour champion. So as we see what this has done to the overall, Justine dufort Pointe with that second place finish moves into the lead in the overall for the free ride world tour. Nice to see a Maple Leaf there on the top, but of course we still have another event to go. So right now, nothing. Molly Armanino and Megan Baton making a huge jump up from barely making it through the cut with that win. And now she's in the top three. So things really shaking up for ski women as we head to Verbier for the final event of the season and the second stop of the Free Ride World Tour Finals. Justine dufour Lapont leading the charge for the ski women in the overall rankings. So that was an explosive category. Yeah, the Vilci Loader really biting back here in the ski women's field 
as uh, we kind of check in here, the mountain rescue team checking in on Elizabeth Gerritsen. She's standing up, which is a great sign, looking like uh, for sure bumps and bruises. Of course, the assessment is going to be ongoing with our medical team on site, but really happy to see Elizabeth standing up there. A uh, bit of a bit of a mystery where her equipment is. It could be it could be anywhere scattered over a pretty large parcel of real estate up there underneath the eagle as she tumbled and slid for quite a long ways. And I think really showing that slide, I mean, I don't want to uh, make fun of Elizabeth here, but how far she slid shows how steep that is and it stays steep in the landing for a long, long time. Yeah, it's a pretty serious section of the face here, but if we look at Elizabeth's skill and experience, she is definitely a rider I would back to go into that section and champion it, but today was not her day. Yeah, really glad to see Elizabeth standing up there so you can even hear in the finish area the, the cheers um, from the audience and the other riders as everybody kind of breathing out a little bit finally as we saw Elizabeth stand up. So here we go. This is the top three on the Vilti Loader in the ski women's face. We have Ari Chakromi taking the top spot, Justine Dufour-Lapont and Megan Beton. Those are your top three riders on the face today. Ski women lighting it up today. Christina, hello. Joanne. 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 Oh, a nice conversation about the mums. Of course, free ride would be nowhere without the parents. A huge thank you to all the free ride parents who are carting your kids around the country and for all the junior free ride stops. This is what it leads to, in my opinion, 100% worth it. Absolutely. There's so many amazing parents that are just on the grind there, getting the kids to exciting places, supporting them, helping them scope their lines, champion them. And as I said, kids, but you see Justine and Ariana there still shouting out to their mums who are absolute pillars of support for them. Well, they are certainly their mums, kids, all the way through. And uh, those three women standing on the podium in the ski women's category today with a fantastic show. Ari Chakomi, what a comeback. The last time she was here, she won and, and just showing exactly. You know, we, we, we lost Ari to competitive free ride for a couple of seasons. She had some injuries and then a bit of a program to get herself back, decided to, to pop back in for a wild card. But I think it's fair to say that she hasn't lost a step. Certainly not. That was such an impressive, flowful run. So we All can right. see Elizabeth there standing up, not looking super comfy, but we're happy to see her on her feet. Yeah, it looks like we've got both skis on site now with Elizabeth, and I think she's just waiting for the for the paramedic or guide to, to pop the ski under her boot. Maybe so that's a good sign if she's going to be clicking in. I think they're maybe just checking out her ski, make sure they're they're still functional. Um, as, as definitely the skis have gone for quite a ride as well. So if she's waiting to click back into her skis to make her own way on her own feet down the Vilti Loader, that's a huge, huge sign of, uh, of the condition of Elizabeth Gerritsen and a big, big source of relief for everybody, both on site here and at home. And you can just see the distance that she has fallen. It's pretty incredible and just really speaks to the formidable face above her. Yeah, and you know, I think sometimes we shortchange exactly what these riders are doing. And we, it's, people talk about, oh, you got to wear a back protector and you have avalanche gear and an airbag and a transceiver. These are real mountains. This is a, effectively a backcountry situation. And the top riders in the world trying to push their own limits in the sport, both for themselves, I think mostly, honestly, for themselves. Um, but it is, it, it, there's real risk in the safety equipment, the back protector and the backpack for sure there making a, a big difference for Elizabeth Garrison. So, so happy to see her standing up under her own power. Hopefully she's gonna be able to get clicked into her skis there and, uh, and lock in and make her own way off the face. Elizabeth Garrison with a scary one. Ski women, dynamite today.
Well, the ski women delivering fireworks as we have come to expect for them. I'm sure Mark Warner and I are going to be discussing that one in the Freeride World Tour podcast. And let's have a look here. Elizabeth Gerritsen on her feet, skiing down, making her way off the face. You can see just from, from the, uh, the impact of the tumble, her airbag deployed, but so grateful to see Elizabeth up on her feet and skiing her way off the face. She's stopping in. We've got the mountain guides posted all over the face. And we'll have a look here at the overall situation in Ski Men, but a big relief to see Elizabeth making her way off the face. Right now, this is where we sit in Ski Men Valley. Rainer, the Austrian, becoming a legend already at such a young age, leading the charge. But Max Hitzig is very, very close. These two travel buddies, they roll together, they ski together, they have dinner together, they're roommates, and they are very, very close at the top. Maxime Chablot, Ross Tester, all still very much in the mix. And uh, we keep mentioning 25% more points up for grabs here in the Freeride World Tour Finals events. So, of course, all to play for in Ski Men as we get ready to kick off our last category of the day on the Vilti Loader. And plenty of nervous moments from the riders up there. You see Swiss rider Simon Perdon having a, a glance over the face as we take a look at the order we're going to be rolling out in today. Max Hitzig going to be kicking things off. Of course, you cannot forget his explosive moment in Kicking Horse, taking the win, taking the peak performance radical moment, and the, the fan voted rider of the day, Finn Billis, the Kiwi, dropping in second, and then Valley Rainer. It's just stacked with, with uh, talent, top to bottom, and then the young Canadian at the last man to drop of the day in the Freeride World Tour, Marcus Gogan gonna round things out here for us in Ski Men today. Fever Brune Pro delivering once again. And as I was just starting to say before we saw Elizabeth skiing her way across, lots to talk about in the Freeride World Tour podcast. Make sure you check in. We're gonna be breaking it down. Peak performance fun bet, fan favorites. Well, 56% of you think it's gonna be Max Hitzig's day. 53 thinks it's gonna go to Max Palm and Max Team Chablot. This is the first time it's been an all max peak performance fun bet fan favorites. So the Battle of the Max is delivering for us, and uh, that's what you think. Let's see what they think. As here we are seeing Elizabeth Gerritsen skiing down under her own power, looking like she's uh, in, in a pretty good position there. Uh, I mean, certainly sore, but really happy to see her. I'm so thrilled to see her moving under her own steam there. What a relief. Well, we do not rest at the Freeride World Tour, and Max Hitzig, what a way to start the ski men. This German-Austrian man, I mean, he's already got a win. He's 20 years old, but he's already got a win on the Vilti Loader. Last year, as a wild card, he took the win with an absolutely spectacular run, and I'm sure he's going to be looking to back that up here. Opening up this little cool out here, riding in with real aggression, finding an air into the Kuwa, over the top of Transferring that. Transferring over the Kuwa, he went in that Anthem and entrance. There's not many ways to find a steep landing there, but Max Hitzig doing it, getting a little 360 over that playful wind feature. So what a way to start this run for Hitzig as he lays out a backflip, a tiny bit of a back slap on the landing, but Max Hitzig already just firing down this Vilti Loader face and way out to the rider's left. Lacing the features there and just looking so solid. This one, Megan took so long and he threes it, goes longer, but comes unstuck. I think you're right, Derek, that really falls away from you, that roller, and I think the riders are going a bit longer than imagined there. I honestly didn't believe that Max Hitzig could fall. <laughs> That's the first time we've ever seen him not execute something to absolute letter perfection. And Max Hitzig just casually floating the 360 and going so far down. So everything was going Max Hitzig's way there until it wasn't. Uh, that transfer at the top out of the Antimatin entrance across the couloir, that was so creative and so bold because if you short that, it is going to suck. I was so gripped watching that he would clear that rocky pillar. Oh, no. So let's see this again. He comes up onto the shoulder and airs right over 
that big rock wall. Stomping it so cleanly. And then the backflip here, holding it, slowing it down. Yeah, just a tiny bit of a backslap there. Maybe just the butt touching down. That would be a, 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 a stage one. And then this casual 360 going even further than Megan Baton's bomb hole, which was so far already. That was huge there. So some of these features, they don't have to look like cliffs. But if, you know, from our position here, you can look up at Hitzig's bomb hole there where he landed. And it's right in the kink where it goes flat. But the crowd digging it. He certainly put on a show. A 64 for Max Hitzig. As you can see, the hands just go up. He's going to pop himself into the hot seat. But a as the first rider of the day, that is so far the highest score we've seen. And an incredibly impressive run from Max Hitzig, even with that mistake. I think he just went too far on that one and, and landed where it's just it's really flat. Yeah, because he looked very relaxed, like he'd set it perfectly, but potentially just took it a little a little long. So looking back up at the face, wondering what might have been for Max Hitzig as we see the whole picture of the Vilti Loader. This is a really broad face, so the line options absolutely enormous. And it's you know, it's been interesting checking in with the riders during the inspection face check time. The decision-making process has been really difficult for them. Should I go over there? Should I go over there? They got A, B, C, D, all of these lines that they're trying to decide between. And uh, when you get to this point where we see the Kiwi Finn Billis, you have to have decided because <laughs> you got to go do something. So you better have it locked in in your own head. As we look here, Finn Billis has been a standout in his debut on the Freeride World Tour this year. He made his very first appearance on the tour right here in Feverbrun, Austria last year as an event wildcard. Decided he loved it so much he wanted to come back with uh, with a full-time wild card onto the tour this year and has been spectacular really bringing the freestyle element but we've seen him grow in his free riding already and adding those those classic free ride elements to his runs yeah i think i i remember him saying about his debut here in people last year he arrived at the ridge as he saw abel Moga send the eagle and explode and he thought what have I got myself into? Yeah, these people are wild. Big shout out to the Billis's Finn's parents supporting both Billis brothers in their free ride and for Finn freestyle journeys. Uh, we were talking to Emma before. She's just so excited for Finn having uh, having a great time on the tour. This is trademark Finn Billis. Big grin. So excited to get after it. And the conditions, I think, lining up perfectly for the young Kiwi to show the best he's got to offer on the free ride world tour. Just hopping over the guide wires at start one, working his way down the ridge. A little butter there, butter three. Yeah, adding a couple points already. Yeah. Getting things kicked off in style. As we expect, Finn does nothing without style. And now he is picking up the pace. Speed starting to come into Finn's run as he's zooming down, heading over towards this jump. I knew he would hit this feature. Big backy over rotates and comes unstuck in a landing. Hate to see it from Finn. So this jump actually proving much more difficult than we've seen. I remember George Rodney hitting it early and then of course Marcus Eder delivering just the, one of the greatest runs we've ever seen in world tour history. But this year seeming to be a bit more difficult to find the transition. Yeah, it's a different snow year for sure. We've had less snow and then we've had a top up. So I think, oh wow. And a flat three for Finn with another over rotation there. Coming down, looking pretty much dead sideways. One ski staying up, one ski going down. Parting ways there for Finn Billis. Unfortunate for the young Kiwi rider as, uh, I mean, all the elements there, but just not quite able to put it together. I think riders are underestimating how quickly things get flat. And when they're watching videos of other years, the snow pile under the landings has been, or created a slightly steeper slope to land on. This year, that's not the case. We've got the nice top up, but the overall snow pack is still nowhere near what we've seen in other years. Yeah, it's certainly been a tough year in the Alps. We are lucky to have this top up, but it's just, giving the, um, the riders a false sense of security in some instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So Finn's got to chase down his ski and see where it went off on its little adventure. I think you can see the track of it. Hopefully he can see that as he's now putting on a single ski clinic for the audience on site and for you at home. 
Just having a wee korero with someone in the trees there. Hopefully found a ski. Going way down into the landing and deep into the snow. So there are certain spots in the snowpack here where it is quite deep. So laying out the backflip, that's where he needed to land and carrying kind of an extra three to four meters as that rotation. It's really hard to, oh, that was a bit of a bumpy ride there for Finn. Yeah, as you finish your rotation, it's hard to stop it when you realize you're still a couple meters off the ground and your backflip is done. Uh, so Finn, unfortunately going down on that one and now he's just on the hunt. So he got two skis Oh, he's got there. two skis on. It was, it was hiding out in the trees. And Finn Billis, ever the playful rider, airing into the snowballs and just finishing things off with the uh, trademark Finn Billis playful style, popping over everything. He's not going to waste a second or a single meter of this face in these conditions. He's going to enjoy this last little bit once he was reunited with his ski, Finn Billis. You'll, uh, I guarantee, coming through the finish line still with his trademark smile. Yeah, as soon as the comp was cancelled or postponed on Monday, he went straight out and cut laps, just playing around the resort with Addy Rafford and a few of the crew. So never waste a moment on skis, Finn. Thanks, brother. Oh, big hugs for Hitzig and Billis in the finish area as we head on back up to the top. This is the man in the golden bib, Valley Rainer. He was uh, he was bumped off the tour, didn't make the cut last year, went back to the Challenger Tour, won that, back on tour, and he has come back with a bang. 15th in the first event and then a first in the third in the last two events. So Valley Rainer really hitting his stride when it counts. And taking an aggressive entrance off start one there across that huge exposure. Trying to carry his elevation, keep some speed, find some features. Now Valley coming above the Hoysel Cliff. We haven't seen a full send off the guts of it, but we have now Valley Rainer taking it deep and clean as he stomps the Hoysel Cliff and now on that right foot making his way over to the far, far skier's left side of this face. Perfect three there, landing and lining up his next features. And a big backflip. Can he hold it a little backslap again? Taking it a little bit past the sweet spot on the transition, but clean and the only two guys who have skied before Valley have had big crashes. So definitely looking good as he looks like he's gonna head out into the same area where we saw Max Hitzig. Is he gonna be able to make this work? Looks like they planned their runs together and Valley opting out of the trick and landing a little bit higher than we saw the other guys and managing to hold on. And listen, listen to the crowd there as we hear the people just screaming for Valley Rainer. He is Austrian, we're in Austria and he has just laid down a run for the people winning hearts and minds out there. And I suspect he might have planned his run with Max Hitzig. They're as thick as thieves and they put together some pretty similar lines out there. Well, the first clean run we've seen from the ski men's category. And the local crowd on site here, absolutely loving it. Valley Rayner with a clean one. Big hugs for his travel, uh, travel companion, Max Hitzig there. Ah, uh, better. So going huge off the Housel Cliff and just riding out with real power there. This big backy, as we mentioned, a little back slap, but the cleanest run we've seen so far. Yeah, he really laid that out, carrying way down into the landing, almost landing in the end of one of those bumbles. We've got handmade signs. That's the sign of a true local hero. When the handmade signs come out, you know the crowd loves you. So Valley Rainer doing his bit here to take an Austrian win on the Freeride World Tour at home with an 81-6-7. So strong, strong case for Valley Rayner as he's gonna take up his spot in the hot seat. We saw him sit in the hot seat for a 
long time in Andorra, those nervous moments, and now he is back to his home, his former home, now his home again on the Dina Star hot seat. So Valley Rayner locking in, and we're gonna see if he'll hold on. I mean, the, the, the continuation of this start list is just rider after rider after rider that are huge threats for that spot. So there's no way he can be comfortable for long. He'll certainly be sweating in that hot seat. But heading back up, the, up to the top, we've still got lots more riders to go. Yeah, snow conditions really delivering on the Vilti Loader here. We waited all the way through the weather window, proving the weather window concept as the last possible day of competition is today, and it has delivered in spades. Andrew, Pro Andrew Pollard, the pride of Alta, Utah, he's been enjoying quite the season at home as the snow just keeps on coming every day while we've been here in Feverbrun on down days. He just shows me the forecast from, uh, from back home. Look, another 15 inches. Andrew Pollard, though, 28 years old. He's been lighting it up on the tour since the moment he arrived here. Stylish, fast, smooth. Everything he does is fun to watch, and he is going out with some pace across the exposure. Always finding transitions and features that other people haven't thought of. I love the lines that he puts together. Cross court 360 there, coming in with some pace to the Housel Cliff. Big send. Perfect. Dumps it and carries some serious pace over to the right. Just a slight angle on the takeoff gave him that exact angle he needed on the landing, getting bogged there, one foot in the powder, but not going down and pointing it off the nose of that and turning again to make sure he adds another feature with a 360. So Andrew Pollard, I'm wondering if that bog in the snow kind of kept him from getting to where he wanted to go, but proving that he, <laughs> he can... Keep it, keep it moving with a spraffy there. So Andrew Pollard, always fun to watch. Yeah, I feel like he's done a little bit of freestyling in this run. I think it hasn't gone totally to plan, but he's pulling it together. Big air there. And he looks like he wants something else. Yeah, staying on that left foot, finding another feature with pace. So Andrew Pollard just smooth all the way from top to bottom, a classic A. Paul run. Every single thing he does, you'll never see him land flat. You saw the cliff that took out Max Hitzig. A. Paul took it at a completely different angle and his landing so smooth. Every single feature on that run had a nice connection. He doesn't like to land flat and he understands how not to. He sure does. Beautiful run from Andrew Pollard. Some nice little squiggles there for the fans. <laughs> so this seriously big take on the Housel Cliff was really impressive. I'm just spinning another little three in that smaller feature there. He's linked together quite a lot in this run. Yeah, throwing the big Daffy there on that one and then bopping and popping through the snowballs over to the uh, the cliff that or the, the rollover air that took out Max Hitzig and then taking that one cross court. So just zigging and zagging his way all the way down the face. And the score coming in for Pollard and he's into first. 86 points for Andrew Pollard. He can't believe it. I think you're right, and I think there was a big portion of that run that was absolutely freestyled, as I think the bog on the windlip, which we didn't catch in the replay, slowed him down enough that he couldn't get on top of the cliff that we saw some of the other riders take, both Valley and Max Hitzig throwing backflips off that, and Andrew popping into the hot seat. So we're not going to have an Austrian champion here, but we are not done. As we go back up, Maxime Chablot, the reigning freeride world champion, Champion. He had one season on the tour and he already has a title. Right now he's sitting in third with a couple solid results, a fifth and a third, and then a 13th in the last event where he went down on a cork seven. Maxime Chablot, the Swiss rider, getting ready to kick his campaign off for victory on the Free Ride World Tour at the Fieber Brun Pro. Chablot, freestyler Big Mountain, Anna. Well, let's wait and see. I remember last year was his first time on like a really big face like the Wilkes Loader and he had a big yard sale. So I think he's determined to bring it back and get some redemption here on the face. 
Well, he is going fast out of the gate and using all these rollers as airs. Maxime Chablot wasting no time getting over into this roller air as he pops off it with a lofty backflip. Is he going to be able to... Oh, perfect connection with the landing. So Maxime Chablot speeding over on this rider's right side with a 360 now coming. Oh, just getting a little wild there, but still able to ski out of it. Working his way down the cool wire, finding his next features, all just surfing that lip there. Getting a bit caught up on some bushes, but holding it all together. That left footer as he comes into this one, throwing the seven, and he's able to land that too. So Maxime Chablot bringing freestyle elements into the big mountain, as is his usual motif. Maxime Chablot now all the way across as he wants to get this last final section. Skiers right of the gully. There are plenty of good options here with another big backflip. Looking a little loose there, but holding it together, airing over that next one. Oh, oh. Definition of loose but lit here for <laughs> Maxime Chablot. Many, many moments where it looked like it might come unstuck, but never quite losing it. Maxime Chablot on the ragged edge of control, top to bottom on that run. But so, so much fun to watch for the Swiss rider, just letting him off the leash completely. Oh my God. That was a battle, dude. That was dude. the loosest run <laughs> of my life. It was like one of them, you'd like back up and be like, I'm gonna do the next one bigger! I was like and then this? Like, Twice dude. in my run. You fought for it though, that was fucking impressive. Well, there you have it. Oh my God, that was Shablo's reaction. He went so far. There may be even another transition down there. Huge off this one and just stomps the landing and just shows Perfect control with great turns straight after. This was the loosest moment. Kind of puts a little hip check into the landing of that three. Yeah, a super awkward takeoff. And then getting the cork seven there. Let's have a look at that landing. It was solid. He got pushed down into the travel a little bit. And then another backflip. And the run out from this one was absolutely haywire. Wild stuff. Skims over it the next feature below him, but just manages to hold it together. I mean, you could see it in his reaction. He almost couldn't believe he was still on his feet at the bottom. So we could see on the judge, the video judges bars their control a little bit. And there were many moments where Maxime Chablot was not in control on that run. But what he did do was keep his skis in the fall line. So that loss of control, he was able to fight back. And he heard Apol say, you fought for it. And he certainly did. I mean, so kind of this is the judge's bit. view. This is the exact thing that the judges are watching right now. They're winding the replay back to see what it looked like when Maxime landed on that 360. Was it hips first? Was it feet first? How is that going to affect the control score in, in the category? So it's really cool to get the inside look at what the judges are looking for real time. Yeah, the takeoff was way too soft. Didn't spend enough time in Utah shredding pow. <laughs> nah, dude, you did. That was Utah. Dude, thank God I'm wearing thick gloves, bro. Because I punched that tree. I was like this in the air. <laughs> Your Black Diamond Freeride World Tour branded gloves were great. <laughs> in the back, it was pretty big, and the 7 was pretty good as well. Yeah, so I Maxi don't sit with a Paul because I'm kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> Maxime just kind of running us through the run there as these two riders catch up. Love to hear them chat as we wait on the judges to have their say. This is a tough one because there were many moments that were spectacular and really good. He said the backy was good, the seven went well, and then a bunch of moments that were just ragged for Chablot there. Yeah, he seemed to set everything quite well, ex with the exception of that the 360, is, which was pretty wild. Got the hand drag on the cork save. The thing that wasn't clean was not clean, but the thing that was, was. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have said it better. Yeah, that's pretty deep there. That's a deep assessment from Maxime Chablot. And uh, you kind of heard him say to, to Andrew a little bit earlier, it was way too soft on the takeoff of that 360. So probably why he ended up, it looked like he bogged. <laughs> and then they had to heave I mean, his body around. Hits, I landed them clean. 
All right, here we go. Judges having their say into second for Maxime Chablot with an 84-3-3. So the good parts outweighing the wild parts there for Maxime, but just the decision coming in, not quite enough to take down A-Paul's picture perfection of his run. So big fist bump there. He's the man, A-Paul's the man, bro. Phew. Well, I gotta say I agree with that assessment there. Maxime Chablot, that was uh, that was something. I'm sure we're gonna see some replays from that run, running the absolute razor's edge between control and disaster. Heading back up to the top, the Frenchman, Oscar Mandin. He was a wild card onto the tour this year and opened his campaign with a second place, a silver medal and a podium spot at the very first event of the year. And what is Oscar gonna have for us on the face today? He's heading out, looks like, to the rider's left from start one. Into the spicy zone there. His dad is here supporting him, cheering him on. He's had a great season with a wild card and a second place in his first event. Getting some air there, cross court, coming in above the Housel Cliff. Yeah, keeping it pinned into the fall line. Perfect connection, landing and getting onto that right foot to make his way across. If he's gonna have a little bit more luck with this wind lip jump than we saw some of the other riders. It's just a little bit steeper. And yeah, just quite boggy on the way into that one. So not having quite as much of a playground effect on the on the riders' runs as we've seen in other years. You can see the sun starting to warm the snow on this side of the face. He's taking on his next one, big flat spin, stomps it. That's where you want to land on that air. Oscar Menten doing his research as he finds the exact right transition as we've seen some other riders get smushed on that landing and he's finding his way all the way across, staying really high on this one. We know there's that big step down roller that Oscar is approaching. And just taking off a little corner of it. Maybe he's got something else planned for yeah, us. Yeah, there are features over here. The dead tree drop far, far over. We saw this be a playground for men's snowboard in the past. And Oscar finding a nice transition onto the snow. So a solid, solid run for the young French rider. A clean one, top to bottom. Oscar's going to be pleased with that as he had a tough, tough go at kicking horse. Yeah, he got taken out by Avi Debris in the last event. So happy to see him navigate through all of those little ice balls. Yeah, there's definitely some old uh, the, some old stuff under the new snow. That side of the face, the rider's left side, it sits in the sun from the early morning all the way to the afternoon. So in the early days of the weather window, we saw that melting and just shedding snowballs all the way down. Those snowballs are still there, but now it's in the negatives uh, in temperature. So they're all frozen and some of them even frozen in place, which is something you really don't want to hit. Getting a big hug from Papa Mandan. So I love the way Oscar took the Heusel Cliff landing in between the bomb holes. You can see line score Jack there and this flat three as he comes around just perfectly. The timing of getting his feet underneath him, that was textbook for Oscar Mandan. And then this lower cliff, wondered why he didn't take the big roll away air at the same kind of pace and distance as the other riders. Well, that's why he had another feature altogether in mind for his line. So using the riders extreme left of the venue here, Oscar Mandan loving those skis, showing them off to the crowd at home. Just showing my cat's name. Oh, so he is showing his cat's name. Oh, bro. He's had uh, a very famous Instagram cat called Shoopy in the past, and now he's got a new cat, which might be the new hot favorite. Oh, bro. Yeah, it looks like Nayu and Shoopy both getting a shout out there yeah, exactly. on his skis. How many points do we have? So Nayu is yet to have an Instagram channel started after that cat, so if you want it, you need to DM Oscar Mandan. All right, well, the judges getting to work, lining up the criteria on their cards with what they saw from Oscar Mandin. And an 83-3-3 for Oscar Mandin into third so far. So A-Paul holding down a couple of really big challenges there from the riders that we've seen so far. Andrew Pollard sitting in the hot seat 
And uh, Maxime Chablot in second. Oscar Mendin going to be sliding into third there, bumping Valley Rayner down into fourth. And Max Hitzig not, uh, not having the day that he was looking for. So he's in fifth right now, but still plenty of riders to go. Five more riders at the start gate. We've got six riders down, and this guy in the start gate is a huge threat. Peak performance, or sorry, Scott Ryder, Simon Peradon, he's brand new on the tour, but every time he drops out, it's really exciting. He said at the start of the year he just wants to send it for the Swiss boys at home in Verbier, and that's exactly what he's done. But he's done it with a veteran's poise, kind of, I have to say that I wasn't sure we were gonna see from such a young man on tour. Yeah, he's made a really impressive debut and had two successful events and a, a little crash in, in the last one. So he's here in the Wiltsy Loder face looking to put one together for the books and for the boys, obviously. <laughs> All right, so Simon Peradon making his way through a relatively untapped area of the face so far. Only a couple tracks in there as he makes his way down over this extremely steep section. 360 looks like getting sat down there. I think he caught a rock in the landing. So let's hope he can arrest himself because we've seen earlier today that it's very steep. It's so steep there. Airbag deploying there for Simone Perdon. Not able to hold on. It's so steep. You can just see by the way the riders continue to roll. Hopefully Simone is all right after that. Looks like he's just kind of not, uh, not stoked as he has taken a tumble through the rocks. So Simon Peradon just kind of collecting himself. Hopefully he's all right. We're gonna get a wave from him. It's so steep there. Still continuing to slide as he tries to get his skis underneath him. And Simon back up on his feet and moving. So I think that was a, a disappointment pause rather than an injury pause for the young Verbier rider. Taking it easy as he assesses himself and his gear. So safety guy already on site. As we said, we've got a huge contingent on the safety team, multiple ski patrollers, mountain guides, the mountain rescue team, all in place, all over the face, tucked up against the rocks, in the trees, in places where they won't affect riders' runs, but are able to respond really, really quickly um, if a rider goes down or if a rider is injured. So Simon Peradon just having a little chat with the safety team member there and looking like he's going to make his way. Continuing down on the Viltsi loader, not the day he was looking for for the young Swiss. Definitely not, but he's done an incredible job. He's got two top 10 results. He's made his way through the cut and into the finals. So he's all set for next year and this is going to be a throwaway run for him. Yeah, for sure. And you can see even just by the body language, dejected, you know, kind of shoulders down. That's a tough one to swallow when you've been having things go your way on the tour and then the last one uh, not going his way, kind of overshooting a double and kicking horse and, and landing on the takeoff of the second one. And now Simon Peradon, another tough day at the office. So that's a tough one to swallow when you're, especially when you're young, it feels like today is as far as it gets and there, you know, the future just seems like a mile away. But I'm sure he's going to regroup and the next time we see him drop out of a freeride world tour Stargate, it's going to be at his home in an area where he's so comfortable and he's going to have the crowd behind him. So I am positive that Simon Peradon is going to come back firing when we get to Verbier. All right, so just getting word that uh, Elizabeth Gerritsen uninjured, but feeling very bruised and battered. So that's really good to hear and, and unsurprising, honestly, I think best case outcome for the fall she took. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. And I'm sure all of her friends and family tuning in will also be so. Yeah, yeah great, great result there. Happy to hear that and happy to see Simon Peradon get up and ski out of that one because another scary fall on the Viltsi loader, getting, uh, getting checked out at the bottom. Just, uh, you know, the, again, part of our big part of our safety team is, uh, is the medical personnel at the bottom who can have a good chat with the riders because sometimes the adrenaline will hide the, the symptoms, you know, if, if you may be injured. So Simon is going to head off behind the scenes to get checked out by the doctors back there. And we look, this Viltsi loader is, uh, is showing her fangs today. It's a, it's a serious mountain in a serious part of the world and definitely not an easy task for the riders to go top to bottom clean on this face. Yeah, two of our Viabier riders going down in some of the gnarliest exposure out there, but happy to see them both walking away from it. 
Well, every single rider is a threat for the podium. Scott Ryder, peak performance rider, Carl Regner Ertsen, the Swedish man. He has always, always delivered exciting runs and firework runs on the Vilsi loader. He's probably the guy in the field that has the most experience on this face, maybe other than um, than Ludo Giodia, who's been 10 times on the Vilsi loader face. But Carl Regner Eriksson, this is his bread and butter. We've seen some of the most exciting moments on this face delivered from this Swedish rider. And I have no doubt we're gonna continue that form today as Carl, he's hungry. Right now, Carl is sitting in sixth overall. He had aspirations at the start of the season to, uh, you know, to take the title, and it's certainly not out of reach for Carl Ringner Eriksson, as uh, you know, this is big with 25% more points on offer, and we know he can deliver in the next stop as well. So Carl, looking like he's going to be heading out to the left. Definitely one of the riders that's most at home on a serious face like this. I think lots of the other riders have been asking him for tips on different features. And of course, he has obliged them. Hitting in from start one, across, carrying some real speed, taking a three cross court there. Yeah, that worked for Andrew, and it's worked for Carl as he takes the high angle way down on the hoistle cliff and clean, getting on that right foot to get some direction over here as there's plenty more out in this direction. And threeing that one doesn't get bogged in that takeoff as many other riders has, and looks for his next feature there. Backflip. Yeah, Carl laying out the backflip, coming in with a big backflip, and unfortunately, skiing skis go sideways. That cliff has been taking names so far today. It's just a little too flat if you take it big, but if you don't take it that big, then it's not big enough to flip. So it's a really delicate balance for the riders. And you also need to navigate all those little ice balls and the landing there. So he'll be disappointed in that crash, but he's still skiing pal, so not all is lost. Yeah, Carl just pointing the skis now towards the finish area. Was so strong at the top that 360 over the Hoysel Cliff exposure. Such a such a scary place to do that, and such precision needed, which is kind of the hallmark of, of Carl's riding. Precise, but always sending. And unfortunately, another rider taken down by that cliff. So Carl Regner Erson, he's undoing his boots as he's going to head into the finish arch. We are eight riders down. We've had four pretty decent crashes, and we've got three riders more to go. You're supposed to stop those, dude. I know. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. You're oh. skiing so good, bro. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so that cross court 360, and as you said, Derek, absolute precision in the top of this run. Perfect landing, banks a turn straight over into that other section. Manages a little three there where other riders <laughs> were not able to, yeah. but then comes yeah, unstuck on the ra landing of this backy. I uh, think it's a pretty firm landing down there. It's seen more s uh, sun over the last weeks, and I think there's a little bit less snow deposited in, in that landing. I agree completely. And where the landing is, I think the takeoff zone is quite tight. So already there's a bunch of tracks there. And once you get through the powder, the surface underneath that is slush that is now refrozen. So you get through the powder uh, cushion on the top and it's rock hard underneath. And in combination with the pitch of it, which is not so steep, uh, really, really tough for the riders to get it, uh, to get it clean. So we head back up, the antennas are up. For Ross Tester, we've, uh, I mean, what haven't we seen from Ross Tester? Another rider who has a victory on this face, riding out of Tahoe, spending a bunch of time in Utah lately. Ross Tester, we've seen him in a battle for the overall title with Christopher Turdell. He's going to be looking to move up the rankings right now as Ross Tester sitting in fourth, just outside that overall podium. But of course, this is only the first stop of the finals. More points up for grabs means bigger stakes for, for those podium spots. Ten and Ross seconds. Tester certainly capable of delivering a podium run on any face. He's got big mountain chops. His technique is picture perfect. And the freestyle bag that he's got is deep. So anything could happen with Ross Tester as he heads out to the rider's right from start one. Yeah, he absolutely blew the doors off in Ordino, and I'm hoping for the same fireworks here on the face today. 
working his way down the ridge, popping over those rollers, getting some nice angulation in his turns. Oh yeah, just showing that technique honed in his junior free ride career and now coming into play as he comes into this jump. This one has been a tough one. Ross laying out the backflip, finding the tails a little bit, but holding on to it as Ross Tester now swerving his way through this couloir. There's plenty of uh, action still to come. Ross popping off there. He's got those quick feet that are really critical in this couloir as he needs to move back and forth, slashing the wall. Yeah, looking like he's having a great time in this couloir. And is finding his next feature. Throw in the side flip there. Ross getting a bit bucked on the landing. That one, the landing very flat. The further you go, the harder it gets to stick. And now coming out here into the left, we see only one track there. I think that's left from Ludo. And a nice connection with the snow for Ross Tester. And there's more below as he's gonna follow these other tracks that we saw from the snowboard men's field moving across finding a nice angle on the takeoff, tweaking it out and clean for Ross Tester. That was a solid run from Ross. We've not seen much play from Ski Man over on the skier's right of the face, so nice to see him mixing it up there. Yeah, the judges are gonna have their work cut out for him. I'd say there was that, that error on the, on the Lincoln Loop where he created a bit more splash with his body than with his feet for Ross Tester, but otherwise a really solid run. So the speed he took into this, he took it smaller than Maxime Chablot, so it, it seems that you either have to go enormous or exactly as Ross Tester went, didn't overcook it, found the transition. Dude, my legs are all locked up, I'm all cramping. Tossing the side flip, and yeah, just kind of riding out in a, in a bit of a wheelie there for Ross, and then finding the cross-court option on the Ludo Air, Marcus Eater's Doom, and then this lower air. It's nice, you see him land, and then there's a big traverse track there that kicks you again. You almost get a second jump out of it, and Ross Tesser, obviously before the snowfall, that was a bit more visible, so Ross knew it was there and was able to handle that. Thanks for watching, everyone. That was scary. <laughs> I psyched myself out so hard. So getting a little bit of a look into the mental side of the free ride world tour, Ross saying he psyched himself out, it was scary, you know. When when you're up at the start gate and you're watching rider after rider after rider crash, that's gotta take a toll. So Ross into fifth with a 74-6-7, which means that we are going to see Andrew Pollard on the podium regardless of what comes next. With only two riders remaining in the start gate, the worst he can do is a bronze here, a third place. So a huge result guaranteed for APOL, but it is certainly not safe uh, to, to be staying in the hot seat as the two riders left are two of the hottest young talents in the free ride ski men's field coming up both very young both very hungry and both delivering moments of incredible fireworks so Andrew Pollard Maxime Chablot and the Frenchman Oscar Mandin that's your top three so far 86 the top score so the judges definitely leaving themselves a bit of room and this man Max Palm you can see He's wearing the uh, the vintage peak performance jacket from the early 90s, made over 10 years before he was born, part of that Wear Again program from Peak. Max Palm on course now, always exciting. So he's working his way down the ridge from start one. I think we can be assured that he's gonna find some playful features to bring some freestyle elements into. Snow is still looking pretty good. The temperatures are nice and low, so he's still throwing up a bunch of snow as he finds his entrance. This is another rider whose ski technique I absolutely love. You know, honed with, with his parents. The this Oh, here we go. Max Palm with an enormous 360, perfect landing. And he's trying to hold on. Oh, he gets onto that left foot or right foot and goes down. And yeah. Max Palm getting hung up or held up, I guess, by the bushes. I think the bush stole his ski as he kind of bounced over that little section there. So that's going to be a no score for him. Oh, things just getting started with, uh, with a hot, hot start for Max Palm and then all coming undone as we'll see if he's going to hike up there 
to get that or if we're going to get a, a ski dude on the face to go collect that. That's going to be quite a hike for Max Palm. So yeah, the bush taking his ski and then the next bush actually arresting his fall. So a bit of a, a bit of a hot and cold relationship with the bushes there for Max Palm. Yeah, I think we'll get a ski dude into that one. So huge 360, does a critical turn there, but then just loses a ski as he jets over that bush. The in run for that was so crazy. And yeah, Max gets on that ski and then it just clattering off. And you can see there's some wind sculpting, some texture in the snow there. It's, it's not 100% consistent across the face. The wind has had a touch on it and in spots it's powder, but that snow had to come from somewhere. And so there's spots on the face where the wind has been blown off. And unfortunately for Max, that was the spot where he had his downhill ski loaded up and not able to hold on. So ski coming off, you can see Max not stoked on that as uh, things were really just starting to heat up. Yeah, it means that we're holding on to that 50-50 crash rate in ski men right now. They're really laying it on the line. But we've got a ski dude there. Looks like Max is gonna win the race to the ski. Oh, it's gonna come down to the wire, but Max Palm taking the win in the race for the ski. The ski dude definitely made a good push at the end to try to skirt over there and, and I'm surprised he didn't just push Max out of the way. This yeah, is mine. He needs to prove his uh, his job value here on the face. So Max Palm going down. That's another big one for Andrew Pollard to fend it off as now the worst he can do is second here on the Vilsi Loader. He's had some great luck. I remember there was a year where both him and his sister Jacqueline Pollard both took second on the face. So A-Paul just chatting away. He's a happy one. This is, a, this is kind of your classic competition free ride. Glory and heartbreak. A-Paul is stoked right now. Max Palm absolutely devastated. And that's the full range of emotion in competitive free ride. And I love having A-Paul positioned right in the hot seat, welcoming all the riders with the best Pollard vibes, always keeping the stoke high. Well, Max is clicking back into his ski. So glad to see that he's all right. Uh, unfortunate outcome for the young Swede. And he's going to be about as happy as a cat in the bath from that. Max Palm does not like when things, you know, when he's not able to show the full potential that, that Max holds on to. He definitely wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's happy when he's happy and he's mad when he's mad. And this is going to be a tough one for the young sweet to swallow. But he's got another chance. Oh, and he got that. And that is... An absolutely, that's a, that's a nice thing to be able to take away from this. A gigantic face shot on the lower section. Max just playing his way down. We saw Finn Billis do it as well. Not a moment wasted in the powder for these riders. A no score, but lots of white room action for these boys today. Just adjusting the goggles, making sure he's got the steez on lock coming into the finish corral there. Well, Max is always looking good. Are you okay, bro? So gnarly. I like your vision. It's okay, it should happen. I still love you, bro. You're the future, you still either way. Wise words from Andrew Pollard there for the young Swede. Loved your vision. You are the future. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Well, here we go. There's only one man left at the top, and it is a threat big time. Marcus Gogan, straight out of the Whistler Free Ride Club, 18 years old, a rookie on the tour, started with some of the wildest moments we've seen in Ordino, and then backed it up with a second place run at Kicking Horse, and absolutely flying out of the gate. This kid is hungry, and he was pumped when he saw the conditions this morning. He has impressed me so much with his technical skiing skills his run in kicking horse was just phenomenal lacing together features with critical turns it was absolutely astounding if you haven't seen it tune in all right heading into the jump pumping on the in run tossing the cork seven and not able to hold on to it marcus gogan going down tomahawking into the guts of the couloir losing a ski there you can see the drone just hovering over him marcus hate to see it. He is looking up the hill, looking like he is intact. 
Well, that jump has taken down some of the biggest names on the Freeride World Tour today. In other years, it has delivered highlights. Today, I'd call it lowlights. Honestly, it's been so tough to wrangle that jump. Every single one of the riders that went down on that are riders you wouldn't expect to go down. Mark is laying out the cork seven, and you can see on the split screen there, the uh, riders at the finish area realizing what that means. Andrew Pollard is going to be a winner on on the, the Vilti loader, and again, the contrast in emotions as Marcus Gogan marching back up to get his other ski going down hard on that cork seven. Almost had it, but the rotation still continuing as he came back into the ground, and the rest of the riders just mobbing Andrew Pollard in the finish area. Heck yeah, dude. Oh, thanks, bro. So I think the Pollard family will be having an early morning over an altar, tuning in and cheering him on in the hot seat there. Marcus is making his way back up to his ski. What a champ. Well, plenty to talk about here. Make sure you tune in to the Freeride World Tour podcast. We'll put it together as quick as we can. Mark Warner and I will be discussing everything that went on on the face today. This face has taken some scalps along the way. So many top riders uh, going down in areas we don't expect. Definitely the different conditions, the different shape of things. The snow was fantastic, but it's not an easy task to wrangle the Vilti loader as some of the best free riders on the planet found out today. For sure, and remember we've got a back-to-back -back competition here. Up next is the Freeride World Qualifier Challenger Series, and all of those athletes have just had 25 of the best forerunners on the planet. So they'll be scoping their lines, locking it in, and be ready to send after we wrap up the event today. Yeah, that really brings up the question when those qualifier or those challenger tour riders have watched the Freeride World Tour heroes just get gobbled up by this face. What do you think that's going to do to their confidence? I do not think it will instill confidence. So they might be micro adjusting their runs, maybe avoiding the Marcus Ada, George Rodney feature at the top there, which has taken down just stacks of riders um, and finding something else to put into their recipe for a good run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely maybe some page one rewrites going on up at the top for, for some of the challenger riders. As we see Marcus Gogan looking like he's all right, another one is going to be disappointed. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite a contrast in moods at the bottom. A Paul absolutely overjoyed and the, the other riders that are uh, that are up there on the podium with him and then some big, big names not having it go their way today. So really, really, I mean, great conditions, but challenging the riders today on the Vilti loader. This face is not easy to, uh, to, to wrangle, and we've seen that bear out. Experience winning the day on the Freeride World Tour in Ski Men. We saw the exact same thing in Ski Women. Uh, it, really tough to make this work, but the riders who have it figured out are riders who have been on it before multiple times. And I think between the riders who stomped their runs and the riders who crashed, everyone got in some pretty sick power turns today, and there's been big smiles all around. So a no score for the young Canadian rider riding out of Whistler, Marcus Gogans. Uh, well, I mean, he was definitely going for it there with the cork seven on that jump, and that one just took down some big names. You had it, bro! I was sitting in the hot seat, and I was like, Oh, I should have told him to go into dog, the shark bro. fucking zone. <laughs> okay, Marcus. Dog, oh, bro. Dude, it was sick. He was so no, was you good. Good. Yeah, I won. <laughs> yeah. That was the greatest. Well, so big catch up there in the ski men's category. Hugs all around. You can see Marcus is fine. He's going to shake that up. Let's or shake that off. Let's see what this did. What happened today, Anna? So we've got Andrew Pollard up in pole position there. Maxime Jablot in second. Oscar Mandant in third. Valley Reyna, who was wearing the golden bib, has done with the chocolate middle in fourth position. And lots of crashes. We've had uh, six out of 11 men crash in the field today. Yeah, more than half the field going down in ski men. Just a testament to how hard they're going. So let's take a look. These are the men that finished on the podium. Andrew Pollard with the win. Maxime Chablot 
and another podium for our young French wild card, Oscar Mandin, the ski man putting on a show and putting it all on the line out there on the Vilti Loader today. So we're going to take a look at what this has done. I imagine a huge shakeup in the overall rankings. The math has been done, and here we see Valley Rainer holding on to the top spot, but just by a hair. Maxime Chablot still in second spot, and Apol taking a big jump up the rankings into third, and all super, super tight all the way down, really to fifth with Ross Tester. So close, so much to play for. This is going to be a fireworks show when we go to Verbier because it's basically tied down to fifth. Anything could happen. Can't wait for Verbier. Andrew, that was an incredible run. Can you tell me? Did that all go totally according to plan, or was there some improvisation out there? I definitely hit the wall on the middle wind lip and was going to spin it, and then did not, and then improvised, and then kind of improvised again. But that's what free ride is. It's not about what you do when it goes right. It's about how you improvise. It's what people forget. Keep it tight and loose. Well, incredible form out there on the field today. We're so stoked for you. Congratulations, Andrew. Thanks, Anna. Andrew Pollard. Andrew Pollard keeping the free in free ride out there on the Vilti Loader face and taking a win here in Austria. This face has been good to A Paul and once again delivering as we look back on the run that took the win for the ski men. men's field on a day that was extremely difficult to lace a run top to bottom. He did exactly what he needed to do and got himself a victory. What a show the Vilti Loader and Fieberbrunn Austria gave us today and a fireworks top to bottom. This, this peak showing its teeth today for sure. Absolutely, we've seen some of the biggest names go down swinging. It's been exciting to see everyone's okay, they're, they're doing well and we've seen some incredible runs from top to bottom. Yeah, unbelievable show from top to bottom and great to see the snow conditions play ball. Now it's your chance to have your say, the rider of the day, this is fan voted. Just go to vote.freerideworldtour.com and tell us who you think was the best rider, was the favorite of the day. All categories are in play. Vote for who you love, vote for what you loved. All of it's available and it's up to you to decide. Yeah, there was some fireworks out there and so you got to celebrate those with the rider of the day. Oh yeah, so once again, the Fieberbrunn Pro has delivered the fireworks we wanted. We proved that waiting to the end of the weather window was the right move. The snow conditions, absolutely fantastic today. That's gonna do it for us here at the Fieberbrunn Pro, but we are not done for the season. We're gonna see you very soon for the Extreme Verbier, the final, final, final of the Free Ride World Tour in 2023. Cannot wait to see you there.
Welcome, 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 free ride fans, friends, and family to the Extreme Verbier. It is the ultimate finale of the Free Ride World Tour. Pumping the fists. That was fantastic. Verbier has become the birthplace, the home, and the ultimate expression of free ride. He's leaving the ball and he gets control again with a massive backflip for him. Whoa! 